Good evening. Welcome uh, to the Power Valley Unified School District Governing Board of Directors meeting for Wednesday, March 27th. I am calling the meeting to order at 7.41 p.m. Um, bienvenidos a la reunión de la Junta Directiva de PBUSD. Disponemos de tradición en español. Si necesita ese apoya, consulte Yarena Lopez. Not Yarena. Maciel. Um, if you need translation in Spanish, please see Maciel and she will have that. Um, I want to call a couple of items, um, note a couple of items for this evening's meeting. We have expected an extremely large turnout this evening. I want to note per fire code and per ADA compliance, we must at all times keep all aisles, all doorways open and clear. If aisles and doorways are not kept open and clear, I will have to adjourn the meeting until they are cleared. Second with that, I also see a lot of new faces here tonight, so I want to take a moment to establish some ground rules. There may be differences of opinion, sometimes strong differences. Please give those speaking the same respect that you would like to receive when you are speaking. This will allow everyone to be heard and the board to conduct its necessary business for the district. With that, I will now move to item 3.2, the Pledge of Allegiance, and I will ask Vice President Trustee Soto to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Vice President Soto. Next, we will move to 3.3. This is an opportunity for our interim superintendent to have comments, so I will turn this over to interim superintendent Murray Strickman at this time. Thank you, President Acosta. It's a special night. I appreciate the crowd, but I also know we have somebody special uh, that our governing board will be presenting. Esta es mi junta penultima. What does that mean? What's that mean, the students who are bilingual? Esta es mi junta penultima. My second to the last meeting. April 24th will be an official meeting. We will have a very special meeting on April 17th to honor the uh, student of the year from each of our schools, elementary, middle, and high school. But I'm going to briefly role model mistakes, mine. I think as a former teacher, when I stood up in a class and didn't do the right lesson, it was important to look in the mirror and figure it out and make things better. So let me begin. Last. Um, board meeting, there was a three to two vote on a pay raise for cabinet. I was wrong. The three to two vote, um, do the, um, I should read what's right in front of me, the education code and the government code protect a seven vote board, and so it did have to be four votes. Our president was right, and I do want to express that. But the issue that was voted on, I do want to make a point. We're trying to attract and build a pool of two positions with cabinet, and that decision I don't think helped. I also want to point out the heavy lifting that cabinet does in every district I've worked in. In particular, at the beginning of this year, some really heavy lifting was done with personnel that worked out very well, especially at one school. And I just want to remind the board and ask the board to reconsider. The second one, is I want to address the TK Kindergarten Roundup. We will do better, but the headline in the Sentinel question our access. Our planning needed to do better, and I know it will get better. I waited in line with some of the parents because I wanted them to see the superintendent there, and I wanted to feel their frustration. So we will do better, but I do want to point out the headline in the Sentinel, although the, I thought the article was pretty good, and I agreed with most of it, the headline said that we're denying access. So I just want to make three points. We already have 10 TK classes in place, and we'll add one to another school next year and the following year. We already, we have at the high school level, 26 very robust career pathways serving 3,800 kids. They're very accessible to all kids. We have the new school principal here who has an incredible program that is part of a CTA, CTE pathway, and I'm happy to see him as Geralty. Their college prep lead to college and higher paying jobs. And my fa final example of accessibility in the PVUSD is music. I left in 2015, we had some music. I came back, it's everywhere. 
and it's accessible to everybody, and I'm really proud of it. And that's my report. Thank you. Thank you, Interim Superintendent Sheckman. I will now move us to item 3.4, Governing Board Comments. This is an opportunity for each board member to make a few comments on standing committees and other reports. And we will start with Trustee Bolano Scow. Thank you, uh, President Acosta. Thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. That's how democracy has to work. People got to engage. So thank you for being here. I know everybody is very passionate about a couple issues. And I'm hopeful we'll get an update about that uh, from our leadership about that because um, that's the right thing to do. Um, I just want to thank Superintendent Sheckman for visiting a couple of schools with me, problem solving. I want to thank the teachers, the staff at Freedom Elementary, Bradley Elementary, MSD. Um, there's a lot of issues at PV High. We're well aware of that. Superintendent Sheckman is well, well aware of that. Things need to get better there. We need to invest in that high school. We've heard last time and other times we don't have enough infrastructure there. We need to have, um, we need to, to give the school the same opportunities that are at other high schools in our district. So that's something we're going to address in our bond and something Superintendent Sheckman and I are talking about. So I just want to acknowledge him for that work. And I'll, uh, I'll leave it at that and keep it moving because I know a lot of people want to talk tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Bellano Scout. Trustee DeSerpa. Thank you. We attended a Pajaro Valley Prevention and Student Assistance Retreat last week, um, well attended, and it was great. Um, I just want to address the um, issue of the kindergarten roundup that apparently didn't go well and was um, headlined in the Sentinel today. Um, I think the process was changed. Maybe, maybe Superintendent Sheckman could speak to it a little bit. The process was changed and it didn't go well, so we're hopeful that that will be corrected and people won't have to wait so many hours to register their TKs and kinders. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee DeSerpa. Trustee Dr. Holm. Good evening, everyone. Um, I attended our agenda setting committee, and I know uh, President Acosta said she'll be making a statement about that. So I'll let her speak about the decision not to bring the CRE contract back at this time. What I will speak to are three quotes that this situation keeps bringing to mind. The first is from Frederick Douglass, that power concedes nothing without a demand. It never has and never will. The second is from Martin Luther King, Jr. The arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. And the third is from various protests um, that I was in attendance at um, in 2015 through 2017. And that is that this is what democracy looks like. Democracy is messy. It's fragile. And as uncomfortable as these moments may be for both those who wield power and those who face it down, the fact that we live in a nation where the right to express conflicting views and have mechanisms to ensure representation is something to be cherished. So thank you to everyone who is here tonight, whether you were elected, whether you're advocating for action, if you're here rep you know, on behalf of the district, or representing the fourth estate via the press. Your active engagement in the process it's what democracy looks like. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Dr. Holm. Trustee Daniel Dodge, Jr. Um, good evening, everybody. I just wanted to quickly say thank you, Mr. Murray Sheckman, uh, for your time being the interim superintendent here. When I first met you, you were my principal at EA Hall. I know your dedication and love to our community and to our district, and so I just wanted to acknowledge that. Uh, I just also wanted to say, I. I was able to attend and meet the new principal at Minnie White, Ms. Langaretta. She has some good ideas. I want to work with her, w including the city. I look forward to her vision. I was also able to meet Mr. Luis Medina, who's in term at E Hall, and he's doing his best. And I know we have people ready to be principal in E Hall. Um, I also want to say thank you, Mr. Gregorio, for everything that you're doing at Watson High. Um, you. You, were, you are the best person to be a principal at that's at Watson High. I believe in your vision. I look forward to working with you. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you to the Life Skills Program at EA Hall, which serves moderate to severe children with special ed disabilities. And I encourage my fellow trustees and city, Watson City Council members to please check out the Life Skills Program at EA Hall when you guys have a chance. And thank you very much. Thank you, Trustee Dodge Jr. Trustee Flores. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming out tonight. In the interest of time, I'll keep it short. I did have 
uh, DLAC committee, intergovernmental committee, and CTE committee, which were all really great. Loved those. But also on Monday, I was able to attend um, a little field trip to Modesto Unified with about 25 other stakeholders, and it was, I just have to say, awesome. So thank you for allowing us to be able to do that. Thank you, Trustee Flores. Vice President, Trustee Soto. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, I was feeling under the weather last uh, meeting and was un unable to attend. Uh, so last night, the Elks offered or, or uh, awarded two scholarships to two Watsonville High School students. And I want to acknowledge those two young ladies tonight, Isabel Lobato Vincencio and her twin sister, Mariana Lobato Vincencio. I, I, I saw her father here earlier tonight. Oh, here we go. Congratulations. And I too was uh, able to attend the tour in Modesto and uh, see where our new incoming superintendent is coming from. And I'm excited as to the, the uh, spirit and vibration that she brings to this district. And I want to acknowledge the people in the crowd. If the camera could please take a look at the crowd, take a nice picture for me. Thank you for your support. You have a wonderful evening tonight. Thank you, Vice President Trustee Soto. Um, so I was unable to attend the Intergovernmental Relations Committee meeting and the CTE Committee meeting um, as I was in other meetings on other district business at that time. I wanted to speak to Monday's event, myself and 24 other PBUSD community stakeholders on Monday had the opportunity to attend site, visto, site visits at Modesto City Schools where Dr. Heather Contreras currently works. This was an important integral part of the process that this governing board of directors identified for the hiring of our new superintendent for PBUSD. And I'm very appreciative of Dr. Heather Contreras for her work with me to make that event happen for our PBUS community stakeholders. And lastly, I just want to note, um, I want the public to know that the governing board of directors of Pajaro Valley Unified School District, we have heard you. And we've heard your concerns around our district's ethnic studies curriculum. One of the first things this governing board of directors will be addressing as a top priority with our new superintendent in this new year, provided her contract is approved tonight, is the district's ethnic studies curriculum. We have heard you and we understand that this is a top priority for our PBUSD community. We will be communicating with you in the very near future about what we will be doing to address the district's ethnic studies curriculum. I also want to take a moment to personally thank Mr. Bernie Gomez for being open to having a conversation with me this past weekend about this topic. And I look forward to continuing this conversation with him and other members of our PBUSD community. Thank you. Now moving on to item 3.5, high school student uh, board representatives reports. We have new school here this evening. New school, can you please come forward? Good morning, Board of Trustees, interim supporter, wait, superintendents, Mr. Cheskimen, and audience. My name is Paulo Rios, and this is Ralph Campos. Hello, I, I am Ralph Campos. I am recently finished all my credits and graduated from new school. I came to new school because I wouldn't do any of my work or show up. What I really like about new school is the community. Our students of the month for February were Viviana and Junior. They are new to our school but brought great energy with them and are always happy with a, and smile a lot. We went, uh, we went to go visit Harnell Community College, CT campus. Students had the opportunity to visit the Harnell campus. So they were able to hear about following careers and pathways, welding, agriculture science, 
Auto technology, diesel technology, and criminal justice. Thank you for Hartnell. Um, the next fall, uh, next we are following. Wait, wait, next. <laughs> of Gavilan Community College on April tenth. New school continues to complete in the Monterey Bay. What is it? Alternative school what is that? Elect electives the le legend basketball tournament every Friday. This is a fun way to get PE credits and super fun to complete. Our thirty our thirtieth anniversary party was huge success. We had a the founder of the school, Adion. Al Dion and Don and the first graduate of New School speak along with others. It was so it was so cool to hear about how the school was founded and the tradition we have created over over the year. The food was <laughs> excellent too. Our seniors prepare for the next step in their journey each week our counselor Monica presents a different topic to the seniors. Our music production class had had their first perform public performance last Friday. They were super nervous but did a great job. They are also played a recorded song that Kevin made on his own beats and soundtrack. One of our greatest partners is Watsonville Wetlands Watch. We worked with them to plant trees as part of Watsonville Greeny, Greeny, what is that? Greeny, what did I say? This one. That one. Intentation, what? Initiative. Oh, initiative, sorry. The initiative calls for, for 5,000 trees to be planted over the Next three years, the goal is for Watsonville to have 30% tree shade. We currently have 7% tree shade and, and, and is un, and, what? On intercation of community health. Oh my God. This year, our teacher, teachers MSG engine, engaged in the profession development around project based learning we like this better than old ways of teaching this is fun creating and choosing our projects uh, as part of our projects based learning initiatives were learned about the life cycle of different plants and soils com competition competition our music class played for us while we worked it was a great way to build community getting ready for the 30th anniversary of honor lewis lard la fortune a former teacher at new school On Fridays, we have Colin with Miss Cat. She teaches us how to make homemade meals, desserts, and more. We find out there is a lot of math in cooking. We made all, all the cupcakes for, for the 30th, 30th anniversary party. In fact, Mr. Schuckman said that this was the best cupcakes he had ever had. I agree, and they were so awesome. In honor, in honor history, in our history class, as we learned about World War II, Miss Cat had us listen and read the book about the only Latin Latino troop during World War II. Most people don't know that there was a troop of soldiers that were all Latino. 
more Mr. Mr. What's his name? Mr. Garrison had heard about his uncle who was a part of this troop and researched all about them finding and ancestors ancestors and one person who was still alive to tell the story of this historic group of men who fought for our country it was super cool to learn that people who looked like us also fought in world war ii every year mr love applies to clay thompson thompson foundation for his tickets for the warriors this is such a great opportunity for us to go to a professional basketball game thank you for having us tonight thank you new school I'll now move us to uh, 4.1 approval of the agenda I'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda with moving action item 9.1 and report and discussion item 10.1 to before item 6.1 can I have a second a second I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries 7-0. Uh, now I will move us to item 5.1, approval of the March 13, 2024 board meeting minutes. I would like to make a motion to remove the approval of the March 13, 2024 board meeting minutes to our next regularly scheduled board meeting as the board meeting minutes did not make it to being attached on the 72-hour notification with this evening's agenda. Can I have a second? Second. I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abs abstain? One abstention. That will be a two. two abstentions. I'm sorry. So that will carry five, zero, two, zero. Okay. Um, I also want to remind everyone that um, speaker cards need to be turned in prior to the action item being presented. So since we have a change in the agenda, if you would like to turn in a speaker card to action items 9.1 or 10.1, now would be the advisable time to do that. Um, and we're gonna move to the presentation first. Yeah. President oh, Trustee, yes. uh, President Costa, sorry. So I'll repeat, I have five cards that have uh, no numbers or, or uh, speaking items too. So I wanna clarify for those folks on your cards what uh, item you're gonna speak to. So as I call you, if you wanna clarify with me, please. Uh, Gilbert Stein, you have an NA. So 7.1. Grisel Jimenez Santos. 7.1. Excel Barasa. Excel Barasa. Maximiliano Barasa. 7.1. Is that 7.1? And Dr. Lourdes Barasa. 7.1. Thank you for the clarification. Thank you, Trustee Soto. All right, um, so now we will be moving um, to action item 9.1, review, discussion, and approval of the superintendent's employment agreement. This report will be presented by myself and our legal counsel from Lozano Smith, Thomas Manilo. So after months of defining a process, community stakeholders' input, stakeholder site visits, and numerous, numerous governing board meetings. The governing board of directors of Pajaro Valley Unified School District would like to announce that it has reached an agreement with Dr. Heather Contreras to serve as the superintendent of Pajaro Valley Unified School District. The law requires that the board provide an oral summary of the financial terms in any executive contract or amendment to an executive contract before the board can take action on such a contract or amendment. So I now will turn this presentation over to the board's legal counsel. Thank you, Tom. Good evening, members of the board and assembled community. My name is Tom Maniello. I am with Lozano Smith, as the board president said. 
and I have prepared the draft contract, which is in the uh, electronic agenda and has been available for 72 hours. I think everybody has seen it now. As mentioned, there is a legal requirement to provide an oral summary in open session before you can take action on the contract, on the financial terms of the contract. So those terms are as follows. The base salary in the contract is 242000 Dr. Contreras will receive the same holidays, sick leave, and medical, dental, vision, and basic life insurance benefits as the other certificated management employees. Dr. Contreras will receive the same stipend as other certificated cabinet level employees for possession of her doctoral degree. Dr. Contreras will receive an automobile allowance of $600 per month. The district will pay the services of a coach during the first 12 months of Dr. Contreras' employment in an amount not to exceed $15,000. The district will reimburse Dr. Contreras for necessary business expenses incurred while working for the district and will reimburse work-related mileage at the IRS reimbursement rate. The district will pay for Dr. Contreras' membership fees in the Association of California School Administrators, AXA. Uh, so I wanted to note, in case you did not see her, that Dr. Contreras is actually here this evening. Uh, so I'd like to introduce her to you and the community, and I believe that she has a couple of words that she wanted to say. Good evening, Board President Costa, Vice President Soto, and Board of Trustees. As Tom said, my name is Heather Contreras, and it is a pleasure to be here before you this evening. I want to start by thanking you for the opportunity to potentially serve as your superintendent. Pajaro Valley Unified School District has been near and dear to my heart for over 50 years, and so this district holds a very special place for me and has been a part of the fabric of my life, and I'm excited to serve as your superintendent. I would also like to thank you for your vision in the search and selection process, in particular noting what you already spoke of, the Monday visit and the superintendent site validation visit. 25 uh, members of the community, parents, staff, students, city council members uh, were able to come and visit Modesto City Schools and give me the opportunity to begin work with the community and to meet the wonderful community of people that exist in Pajaro Valley. One thing that was also noted is that it wasn't just the district learning for the purpose of seeing what my leadership is about, but a real sense of community began to form between the two districts and the people who were on uh, that, those, um, the validation visit. And it was exciting to see at the end of the visit people exchanging business cards and phone numbers and all for the sake of improving student outcomes across all of California and our nation. And that was really exciting. As I shared with you during my, the search and selection process, my leadership philosophy really rests on the idea of connection, collaboration, and community. And so to be able to begin this journey in the way that we did on Monday was, is really I, extraordinary, and I thank you for that vision. It was, it was really a, a great day. Over the next few weeks, if I'm selected as your superintendent, I really intend to embark on a look, listen, and learn journey. To look, listen, and learn about all the wonderful and great things that are happening already here in Pajaro Valley. I intend to meet with students, families, parents, community members, staff, certificated and classified alike, to hear all of the strengths that exist in this district, and then to begin to the design what our next steps will be. I look forward to that. I feel like Monday was a really great start, and I thank you for your time and all of the energy you put into finding your next superintendent. Thank you, Tom and uh, Dr. Contreras. Uh, now, do we have any public speakers on this item? Yes, we do. We have three. I'll call you all three up at once. Richard Martinez, Gus Paz, and Nelly Vaquetta Boggs. Hello, everybody. Board of Trustees, Cabinet, and Murray. How you doing? Um, I'm going to start off by just straight up saying I support this contract. Uh, please do hire her. She's a great person. Um, the bus happened to show up late. I was fortunate I just drove myself up and got to meet her kind of personally. And she was a very welcoming, warming person. And believe it or not, I got to meet with CSEA's chapter president, 
vice president and the other vice president, which is the second. Um, the first, the president themselves said, I don't deal with her personally, but the things I hear about her are great. She was very short, but she goes, when you meet my other presidents, they'll give you some information because they've met her and they dealt with her. And they had no problem saying, we're lucky. You guys are lucky. They're disappointed, but they're lucky. And she's a person that puts the boots on and goes out there and starts marching for the workers. And I'm glad to hear that she's coming here. Maybe, but trust me, if you don't guys vote her in, you're gonna deal with me later. <laughs> and that's all I gotta say, thank you. Good evening, Board of Trustees, Mr. Sheckman, everybody. Um, I had the opportunity, to, first of all, uh, I just wanna say you guys uh, did your homework. You guys deserve a round of applause. You guys did do your homework. I also had a chance to go on this trip and um, got to meet her personally and know that she's very familiar with the community. I'm just gonna piggyback off of Richard. And um, yeah, I was really pleased. I was really happy with my, really happy with um, the outcome. Um, she found out a couple of things about me. And we got, we hit it off. We we just talked, and it was it was it was it was nice. And everybody that we talked to, that I talked to, was just like, oh yeah, you know, we're gonna miss her. You guys got you got you got you got a winner. So I'm looking forward to her. I think she she's gonna be for the community. She's gonna be for us. And um, uh, I hope she says yes. And um, can't wait to meet your husband. <laughs> And your son. Thank you. Good evening, <clears throat> board, President Acosta. Um, I'll have a little blurb during our PBFT time as well, but I just I do want to say thank you for including the PBFT and the CSEA in this um, process and searching, providing input and searching for a superintendent candidate. Um, we. Myself and Brandon Denise, he isn't here tonight, but he joined me along with two other teachers um, from in one bilingual elementary kinder teacher and one of our high school um, alt ed, well, charter school uh, teachers. So, this sounds so strange, sorry. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> it's just like messing with my ears. Um, so it was a really wonderful experience to go and um, to witness Modesto City Schools. I am an observer. I approach things differently. Uh, and so I did immediately meet Dr. Contreras when I walked in, but I kind of made a beeline for other, to, to socialize with other people because I want to know where, I wanted to know where, what is she coming from? What was the, what is this? This, uh, so I'm a, I, I was a designer um, prior to going into education, and so I worked with um, materials, threads, fabric. And so I wanted to know, like, here we have this, this, um, this piece coming from another local, and what, what characteristics is this person going to bring? And having spent some time speaking with the superintendent of Modesto City Schools and some of the other deputy um, assistant soups, I was able to gather that Modesto City Schools really does focus on the community, the employees that work at their, at their district. They understand that if they don't support their employees, they can't have a successful program or school district for their students. It's a district of 30,000 students. Same number of schools that we have. So what I wanna say is we are pleased with what we were able to, what I was able to observe and then what we were able to hear in the debrief afterwards because we all went to different locations. I met with the teachers union and um, the person I met with ha is not an employee of the school district. So that was even more special that they've, it was a person who has worked along with 
Dr. Contreras for nine years. And so they have nothing to lose as far as their um, input and what they, so what they had to say. So we look forward to, I look forward to f formally meeting you um, and, and getting to know more about you. But um, I, we look forward to, to working with you because there is a lot of work to do in this district. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you to all of our union leadership for coming this evening and speaking um, to your observations and um, for attending on Monday. Um, with that, I'm gonna bring it back to the board for discussion. I'll, Judge, I'll, Vice, Vice President Soto. I'll start. So Heather, I really had a pleasurable visit on Monday. I learned a lot about your district. I learned that, uh, you know, the, the places run well and like a tight watch. And I hope that you bring that ideology to this district once you go around and start seeing our facilities and, and how they're maintained and stuff. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, we as a board had, had a, have had a task for the last few months in finding you. And uh, I think we did well. And, and uh, we, we were all in agreement and we made a really, really good choice. Now, to answer the question to those in the crowd with the signs, I understand you have a priority and you're concerned about a topic, but you need to understand that we as a board had a different priority that will be addressed by that priority that we just addressed and are addressing tonight. So it's not that we're ignoring you, it's just that we're not gonna arbitrarily make a decision and have her walk into something that she's unaware of. She needs to be aware of it, she needs to be part of the process, and uh, we as a board are gonna work together with her to make that decision on, on your priority. So Heather, um, that being said, I'm gonna make a motion to support for you to be our next superintendent tonight. So thank you. Trustee Flores. I uh, also second everything that he said, and it was a long um, task at hand, but it was well worth the wait because I feel like we have the perfect candidate for our district. I have no doubt in my mind, and I would love to second your motion. Wonderful, I have a first and a second, but I'm gonna take further deliberation and discussion from the board. Uh, Trustee Holm. Dr. Contreras, you have a wonderful opportunity here you know, and bringing this community together. And, um, you know, I, I know you've been watching our board meetings. So if you can get seven, the seven of us to agree on anything, that's remarkable. Um, and this is an amazing community. And I know you know that. And I look forward to seeing what you can make of being this next superintendent. Thank you, Trustee Dr. Holm. Trustee Dodge Jr. Uh, I wasn't able to make the trip, but I, 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 we look forward, you know, to working with us, but I represent, the, you know, mostly the city of Watsonville. Um, but you also have to remember these classified workers, these principals that I represent, these city council members, um, they're the people that I answer to. You know, I, I, I don't make these decisions lightly and, and I'm able to reach out to these people because, you, know, you know, once a wildcat, always a wildcat. <laughs> and that's, that's the only reason why I'm here. And um, I look forward to seeing you in football games. I know Coach Gregorio, you know, he, and once again, his vision for the football team and the sports of Montsville High, you know, I know he's working on some projects in fixing our fields and infrastructure, and we'll see you there. Go Cats. Thank you, Trustee Dodge Journer. Trustee Bolano Scow. Thank you. Uh, thanks to everybody. Uh, thanks to the board. Uh, thank you, President Acosta, for coordinating the Monday meeting. I've gotten a lot of positive feedback. That delegation was a very wide representation of our community. Um, we're being really honest. A delegation that had, hasn't always agreed about this district in the past, and yet they all seem to be agreeing about this choice. So I feel we're lucky, 
I gotta thank our consultants for helping find Dr. Contreras. You know, credit credit is due everywhere. And uh, as our union president said, we got a lot of work to do. A lot of great people here. And um, yeah, I can't wait to get started. So thank you. Thank you, Trustee Bellano Scout. Trustee DeSerpa. Thank you. Um, I'm one of the only board members who's been through this process before. And, um, and so we had two full days um, of vetting multiple candidates. I think we had how many, seven we, or we eight? Did, it's, we had a pool of well-qualified candidates. Well-qualified candidates. We had a pool of well-qualified. A pool, I'm not allowed to say how many, but we had a lot. It took two full days to interview everybody. And it was a unanimous decision um, to choose Heather Contreras. So we're very, we, we're not lucky, we're fortunate to have found you and that you're willing to come here and um, do the best on behalf of the kids. Um, cause that's what I care about. So thank you very, very much. Looking forward to the vote. Thank you, Trustee DeSerpa. Um, so I have um, my la few comments is that um, this has been a very long 10 months for any community district and board to go through four superintendents within a 10 month period. This is a lot for a community, a district, and a board. I want to thank all our stakeholders in our PBUS community again for their ample input in this process. I um, also want to again thank all the stakeholders that went and gave up their time on Monday to go to Modesto. I also want to thank Eric and Blanca with Leadership and Associates for their assistance through this process and Tom with Lozano Smith for his assistance with this process. We certainly couldn't have gotten to where we are tonight without you three. Um, I also want to thank my colleagues on the board for their endurance and trust in this process that we have been through these past 10 months. With that. I have a first, I have a second, I will now call for a roll call vote. Eva, can you please assist us with a roll call vote? Trustee Dodge Jr., your vote? Yes. Trustee Bolaño Scow, your vote? Aye. Trustee, Trustee Flores, your vote? Yes. Trustee De Serpa, your vote? Aye. Trustee Dr. Holm, your vote? Aye. Vice President Soto, your vote? Aye. President Acosta, your vote? A resounding yes. I w the vote passes with a 7-0 vote. <laughs> I'd like to at this time to formally welcome Dr. Heather Contreras to Pajaro Valley Unified School District and our PBUSD community. Again, welcome Dr. Heather Contreras and everybody already did the round of applause. We usually do it after, so if we could do that once again. I love the rinse and repeat. Welcome. Yes, and I believe we're going to take a picture with Dr. Contreras real quick before she has to depart back to Modesto. Thank you. 
All right, now we are going to move to item 10.1, uh, discussion regarding majority voting for the board. This pre presentation will be presented by myself and the board's legal counsel Lizano, from Lozano Smith, Tom. Um, as I noted um, in the board's last board meeting, I would reach out to the board's legal counsel after the called vote on action item 9.9 .9 failed on a 3-2-2 vote. And there was a questioning and an aired electronic communication from, from district staff to the interim superintendent, which resulted in a miscommunication from the interim superintendent regarding what constitutes the majority of the seven-member board in order to pass the motion. So as I noted and committed, I reached out to the board's legal counsel, and we now have the board's legal counsel here this evening to confirm for the board, district staff, and public what constitutes a board majority of the seven-member board? So I will now turn this presentation over to the board's legal counsel, Tom. Thank you. Good evening, members of the board. Um, I will keep this somewhat short because the, it can be a complicated issue if we get too far in the weeds. But basically, this is an issue that gets confused a lot because when people look at other public agencies like cities, counties, hospital districts, they oftentimes do take action by only a majority of the quorum. However, they operate under the government code. School districts have to operate under the education code, and so you all have a different rule. The education code is very clear, it's section 35164, that you have to take action by a majority of the elected board, which means all seats. There can be a special rule if you have vacant seats on a seven member board, but none of your seats at the last meeting were vacant, so that rule would not apply. All right, so if you get to that, situation in the future you can call me we'll talk through that but you know in the absence of vacancies the rule is going to be you need four out of seven right is there any questions on that um i'll first are there any public speakers on this item we have none okay and i will bring it back to the board this is merely a report and discussion item any questions of legal counsel dr uh, trustee dr home First of all, thank you for the clarification and I appreciate um, the follow-up. Um, you know, while very rare, the board's past practice has been, you know, the majority of the quorum present. Mm. Um, very, very rarely has a vote carried you know, in that way. But with this clarification, what does that mean for any past decisions made under that previous assumption? There are some limited circumstances where less than four can actually take action, such as under the Brown Act, less than a majority can adjourn the meeting. If you lose, if, right, if you lose your quorum, then you can have only three or even two adjourn the meeting. So there are some statutory authority for that. In the absence of specific statutory authority, then you would have a question about whether um, the action itself was a valid action, right? Um, depending on what the item is, there are various time limitations for challenging that those limitations depend upon what the action was. Okay. Mm -hmm. Trustee Dr. Holm, you good? Anyone else? Nope. Thank you, All Tom, right. for being here and providing the board with Congratulations on your superintendent, that's great. Thank, thank you, thank and thank you for all your assistance with that. Okay. I will now close the board's meeting and I will open the public hearing on item 6.1 for level one developer fees, the 2024 study, and this report will be presented by our Director of Fiscal Service, Jenny Eng. Good evening, Board of Trustees, President Acosta, Interim Superintendent Chuckman. My name is Jenny M, Director of Fiscal Services, here to present the public hearing item for level one developer fees ahead of action items 9.10 and 9.11. So PVUSD collects developer fees for purposes of providing adequate school facilities for students generated through new um, development in the area. Uh, we recently completed a level one developer fee justification study by SchoolWorks. 
um, and we're here to present the report. So the results of the study indicate that PVUSD would be justified in continuing to collect developer fees and to increase the level one fee amounts to 5.17 cents per square foot for residential construction and 84 cents per square foot for commercial and industrial construction. Um, the school district has followed all um, local planning uh, rules and regulations. Um, so now I'm here to open up for questions and public comment. Thank you, Ms. Ng. Um, <coughs> We do not have any public speakers to this item, so I will bring it back to the board for any discussion from the board. I'm sorry, I had turned in a card. On 6.1. 1. 6 1. It did get mixed up in the pile. Sorry about that, Ms. Turley. We have one public speaker to this item. Welcome. Thank you. My name is Carol Turley, a uh, longtime resident of Pajo Dune, or of Watsonville. I work at Pajo Dunes. I feel like I live there. Um, I'm aware that some of you have accepted funds from developers and PACs that are funded by developers. And I just want to remind you that that should not affect how you vote on whether or not those developers are charged fees. Thank you. That was our only public speaker. I'll bring it back to the board. Any discussion from the board? All right. See none. I will close that public hearing. Thank you. And I will now open the public hearing on item 6.2, Pajaro Valley Federation of Teachers, PVFT, Sunshine Proposal to Pajaro Valley Unified School District District for Collective Bargaining Agreement, agreement Negotiations. 2024-2025 school year. This report will be presented by Interim Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources, Mr. Saxton. Good evening, President Acosta, Vice President Soto, Interim Superintendent Sheckman. My name is Brian Saxton. I'm the Interim Assistant Soup for Human Resources, and I would like to introduce Arika Kirkman, who you all know, who's the Chief Negotiator for the Union. So we are here to uh, present this public hearing. Um, Government Code Section 3547 uh, requires initial bargaining proposals to be presented for public comment. The PVFT, Pajaro Valley Federation of Teachers, wishes to engage the district with an enlightened exchange of proposals with the goal to finish negotiations before summer break. So you can see the articles listed there. Um, so that's what they are sunshining. And with that, we open it up for any comments or questions. I thought I saw a speaker I did. card. I did. Okay, so you're our one speaker <laughs> on this. I'm just not seeing the card, but. So yes, good evening, trustees. Uh, President Acosta, Superintendent Checkman. Um, as Brian said, I'm Radhika Kirkman. I am the chief negotiator for the Pajaro Valley Federation of Teachers. Uh, it feels like I was just up here TAing our last contract, but that's how negotiations work. They never stop. So we are sunshining for the 2024-2025 school year. Um, in our reopener for our master contract, we open um, total compensation, each reopener, which is our health and welfare benefits and our salaries. And then we have the option to open an additional three articles. So uh, this this reopener round, we are choosing to open three articles um, and we look forward to collaborating with the district and of course our new superintendent, Dr. Contreras, looking forward to working collaboratively with her as well. And yes, I um, will be vacating this position as of July 1, so my goal is to finish negotiations before then and I think we can do that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kirkman. Um, that was our only public speaker, so I will bring it back to the board for any questions, discussion, deliberation from the board. Seeing none, we have none. I will now close this public hearing. Thank and you very much. Thank you, and I will reopen the board's regular 
public session. We are now moving to item 7.1, public comment. This is an opportunity for members of the public to address issues that are not on our agenda for this evening. Please know that through the Brown Act prohibits the board from engaging in discussion for non-agendized items, we are listening. Each speaker will be limited to one minute this evening. Okay, I will call you up in threes, and if you wouldn't mind lining up behind the podium, I have Chris Webb, Christian Martinez, and Jessica Gonzalez. Um, hi, um, I'm actually really glad I get to go first because I hope what I have to say. Um, I hope you guys are able to hear all of us. Um, so uh, I want to direct your attention to your mission statement on the wall over there. So the first statement um, is the mission of Pajaro Valley Unified School District is to educate and to support learners in reaching their highest potential. Well, here are our students, here are our teachers, here are our school administrators. We are all here asking for your support to bring back CRE. Um, Ms. Acosta, you say, um, you talk about respect, and yet you, you and the committee, you willingly arrive 41 minutes late. That is not respect. Um, you all call this top priority and that you expected this high turnout, yet you still arrived late. I mean, honestly, it's really funny how rather than hearing us talk, you decide to take a photo in the middle of a meeting. Oh, thank you. And if your mission you. is to turn the people of Paro Valley against you, then you have succeeded. Thank you. You have more than enough succeeded in this being your last time in the board. Thank you. And I wish to thank you for your time, but please, you're like, welcome. this is going to be the last time you're going to be on the Um, good evening, board. I actually want to thank you, Trustee Acosta, for your um, no me too comments at the last meeting. As you might know, uh, sometimes I get, I, I, I'm on the negotiation team, I have been, and I've lost time with my kids to be participating in those negotiations. So uh, for that reason, I really appreciated the kind of stemming that culture of just automatically whatever they get, because I actually put in the work. Um, and, and the rest of the team, even on the district side. So for all of them, I, I want to thank you. Um, also, uh, I also want to speak to, are we short in the time, a minute? My goodness. Okay. Well, in that case, um, I feel like the anti-CRE people lost all credibility at the last meeting um, because they seem to not know what anti-Semitism is. And it's expressing dissent over public bodies is not anti-Semitism. And Marilyn Garrett had it exactly right. Um, condemning genocide is not anti-Semitism either. Neither is condemning any kind of oppressive government. So, thank you. Hello, my name is Jessica Gonzalez. I'm a senior at Watsonville High School, and like others, I'm here to say to bring back the CRE contract. The contract is helping our students teach ethnic courses. It's helping us, the students, learn about the importance of our backgrounds, culture, and struggles. You guys taking the CR contract is taking this away from us. Like a fellow supporter said, you guys have the privilege to learn your history, so why are you guys taking our chance to learn ours? We've been coming to this meeting to speak up our voices. Your actions are clearly showing us that you don't care about what we have to say. We'll keep fighting until we have the CRE contract back. Thank you. The okay, next three speakers, Marta Blyich, Elias Gonzalez, and Christina Hong. Members of the board, Marta Blyich, I've presented several times to you regarding dangers related to Saba Charter School's operations next to Highway 129. Since Saba began operating the industrial zone through a falsified land use entitlement currently being litigated, parents have violated and continue to violate the City of Watsonville's conditions of approval in Saba's family handbook. 
While SABA administrators noted that their student drop-off and pickup protocols were an accident waiting to happen, the city has never required SABA to conduct a traffic safety study. Moreover, SABA is the only school in the PVSD located in an industrial zone along a highway and the only school with students who have sustained major injuries while walking to school. Because of the city's egregious discarding of so many safety protocols, I retained the services of a registered traffic engineer to conduct a traffic safety study regarding SABA's operations in the industrial zone. I request that you, your transportation team, and legal counsel review the traffic safety study and intervene promptly by directing SABA to follow the conditions of approval versus spilling its operations into a heavy industrial zone. Thank you. Are we waiting for the packet or am I starting to talk? Awesome. Um, buenas noches. Um, just want to come out here and be in support of bring y'all bring up the CRE. I heard you all gonna look at it later. Thank you for that, but it's really important that you actually take a look at those things and start hearing the community. You can actually see it behind us, right? I like what you said. Our, our schools are failing here, right? Our schools are failing. Um, these are the things that we need. Our county, Watsonville specifically, has 50% of the youth on probation, right? Currently, 80% of the youth incarcerated are from Watsonville. The highest suspension rates come from PVUSD. The six highest suspension schools are in Watsonville, right? So it's important that we continue to do something different, right? Um, so bringing it back is important. Please do so. Thank you. Stand with the community. I'm reminded time and again that if there isn't struggle, it isn't ethnic studies. For several months, students, parents, teachers, members of the community have shown up at these board meetings urging you to do the right thing and support ethnic studies. Over 100 people showed up last week to speak out against your misguided decision to abandon ethnic studies. Make no mistake, this is the voice of the people. Acosta, Sota, De Serpa, you have refused to listen to any of us. You've listened to just two people, Gil Stein and Roz Shorenstein. Gil Stein last week stated that he disagreed with 99% of the people here. He is the 1%. Who does he represent? He has actually stated, in the media, he has stated that he views it as his job to get the message of Israel out. That is what he has stated. That is an ideological agenda and an uncritical relationship to state power that has no place in this curriculum. Ethnic studies is not ethnicity studies, and it certainly isn't repressive ethno-nationalist studies. Thank you. I want to say something. I look here. I look at the students. This is ethnic studies in action. We have already won. All right, next three speakers. Isaac Cernas, Nat Lowe, Ellie, Eli Davies. Hello, my name is Isaac Cernas, and I just wanted to start off by thanking you all for being here tonight. I wanted to talk about the need for a theater at PV High School. I have been doing band with PV for many years, and I have done multiple performances. Unfortunately, we have to schedule a date with Watsonville High School for the Mellow Center for our concerts because we do not have a theater of our own. So we have to work around Watsonville High School's agenda in order to perform. While we are very grateful they allow us to play there, it possesses conflicts. Last year, the PV band had to the last year the PV band had to debate whether to perform at the the school cafeteria or the school library and unfortunately um, um, unfortunately um, we're, we had to play at the school library we are grateful that the librarian let us play there but the space doesn't have good acoustics and resources that we need as you all may know pv is the most active site in our district in terms to performing arts our band director emilio alanis and the students are very committed to our band and uh, he built from the ground up we are not the only ones being affected by this 
a performing arts center would allow programs like drama and folklorico to host their performances while also enabling our community to host talent shows and school plays. Thank you. They have been, they have, have to perform at the gym or the cafeteria. I want equity for all PUSD schools to develop their respect, their respective programs and enrich themselves as learners. Is it, is pro- it is a proven Thank fact you. that music and arts increase student engagement performance. Please, people from Watsonville High School and Aptos High School, help us get the facilities that we need at Pajaro Valley High School. We need your support as well. And please, school board members, help us grant our request soon. Thank you for your time. Hi, Board of Superintendents and, and uh, Board of Trustees and Superintendent Shackman. I'm Nat from Area 7. I'm 34 years old. I have a science PhD from Stanford University. And apparently, I've been going to the wrong schools all this time because this is the first time I've heard that 9 and 10 come before 7. I, today, I want to talk about racism, though. Um, racism is not just individuals being hateful. It's also about holding up systems that disproportionately affect people of color. And your refusal to renew the CRE contract is hurting our students, especially students of color. And we know this because they all came out to tell you in their own words. But you also chose not to listen because racism is also about abusing your power to silence the voices of students of color by cutting their speaking time to one minute, even though your bylaws say they have three minutes. And racism is when you value the opinions of just two people of European descent who have never interacted with CRE or PVUSD students or ethnic studies teachers over an entire room full of students of color, teachers, parents, and community members. There's no room on this board for racism, um, and there's no room in higher office. So Trustee Acosta, we want you out. Um, we're going to work to make that happen. Trustee De Serpa, my family votes, Thank you. In, my family votes in, in, in District 2, and we're going to make sure that everyone knows about your role in denying students of color the education that they deserve. That's all. Trustees, put the CRE renewal on the agenda and vote to approve it. While you've been waiting for this to blow over, somehow believing the public will give up on their education, teachers and administrators are losing precious time to integrate this training into PVSD. You're disrespecting teachers and students, especially when 28 students came to talk last time and you cut their time in half. How, I thought, could any educator listen to the brave, vulnerable, brilliant comments from these students and not be moved, inspired, proud? Then I realized that I am looking at politicians. Are you more concerned with keeping your donors happy than serving your students? I did see that Gil Stein contributed $250 to your campaign to Serpa two weeks after the CRE contract was lost. These students and the leaders of the next generation, they are the leaders and they mean it when they say they will not be ignored, they will not be silenced, and that they deserve the best education possible. The actions of this board are living proof that the institutional racism that we all must resist and change is here. It is disingenuous to pretend that this matter has nothing to do with right-wing attacks against educating students on race and oppression. It is crucial to state that ethnic studies is anti-colonial, anti-imperialist, abolitionist, and lifts the voices and experiences of people of color. That framework is critical. Good evening, uh, board members. My name is Eli Romero Ortigosa, and I'm a senior at Watsonville High School. And I'm just here to demand proper training for teachers for ethnic studies. Um, so we know that they're teaching ethnic studies, but they don't have the proper training. They're using training from past years. So it is important to have the, uh, the proper training if you want them to have, um, if we, you want proper education for ourselves and for f- generations that are coming. I have younger siblings, so I'm doing this for, I'm already getting out of this school next, this summer, I'm gonna I'm be out of here, but I have younger siblings who I want them to have the proper education, just as I did th- two years ago. So I'm demanding for proper training for the ethnic studies. Thank you. All right, next three speakers. Matthew Martinez, Isaac Ibarra, and Karen Gomez. Can I talk? Okay. All right, so I'm just here to talk about Power Valley High School and the lack of equity. PV first opened in August 18, 2004, but it wasn't until 2020 that our athletes had a home football stadium, soccer, and baseball field. Uh, it took 16 years 
that that's a long time uh i'm a sibling of a pv alumni and i came to pv with the promise that it was going to be complete uh, school with a theater where we can hold school meetings and other important events and a swimming pool where we learn water safety my uh, we also lost like what was it three two students like from johnny uh, my experience when i attend uh, class meetings on pv campus is poor due to being cramped in the library and not having enough seats for everyone or in the cafeteria where we uh where the refrigerator are rattling in the background, making it hard to hear. It is very unfair when students at other uh, compre comprehensive high schools have multiple gyms, a swimming pool, and theater. They they get the nice seats, nice comfortable chairs with a uh, proper sound system and screen. That's not equity. Um, uh, in addition, Power Valley is like a tick ticking clock for a fatal accident waiting to happen. PV only has one e entrance, one exit, and one crosswalk. The freeway down the road doesn't help Thank our uh, situation. There should be a second entrance and exit, or at least a very, a ver at the very minimum, a, a pedestrian bridge. In conclusion, I hope that Thank when you. the sixth grade students in middle school start at PV High School, they get the experience of full school facilities Thank you. that I was promised when I was Next speaker, in please. High. Hello, my name is Isaiah Ibarra. I'm a senior attending Paro Valley High School. And one thing I'd like to address to the district is for the money you guys are receiving should be, should be equally distributed to each high school. More specifically, Paro Valley High School. For 20 years, this high school was open. We haven't been once close to a finished school. We have no pool, no theater, no alternative electives, and no equity compared to Watsonville and Aptos. And quite frankly, as a football player and track and field player, I speak upon my team and I speak behind my school by saying thank you for our field and track. But where's everything else? We've been having plans on having a pool and theater. We've been having plans on having other alternatives. But you guys are not doing your jobs correctly and not distributing you the money that you guys are receiving. And you guys are receiving hella. And I would like to know, I would love for our school to perform in a big theater. I have to perform in a small classroom of Mr. Robledo's class to perform in one small classroom and very uncomfortable for not only the audience but also for us actors. So I ask you to please hear from us PV students and to please finish what we started and to finally take action Thank you. and actually so, and he, to be an attractive school for upcoming freshmen. And I'd like to you know that us PV students, we will not be silent. We will start fighting until we get our stuff that we properly deserve. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, hello, good evening, School Board of Trustees. My name is Karen Gomez. I am a senior attending Pajaro Valley High School, and I would also like to address the lack of facilities at our school. As you may know, PV is one of the newest schools, yet there's many things that we are still missing. One of these is a theater. As someone that is currently taking theater arts, it's a, someone that is taking um, theater arts, it's pretty sad knowing we don't have a place to perform. Actually, our last play was presented in a wrestling match room. Yeah, that's pretty sad. <laughs> Um, we could only let a certain amount of students watch since the room itself is not so big. As presented in other schools, they have a personal theater where all students are able to perform and shine. I asked of you all to be able to show equity to our school and not to favor or leave schools behind. I think it's important for everyone to have some opportunities and facilities presented to them. Thank you. Next three, Bernie Gomez, Valeria Heldor, or Hernandez, and uh, Hilda Gazanfari. Uh, buenas tardes, good evening. Um, appreciate the shout out. And you know, it's good for the repertoire, you know, it's good. <laughs> kidding, kidding, you know. Uh, CRE. We heard you were waiting for the new superintendent. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Just the students are speaking for, you know. Um, I do wanna move to another issue. Um, two quick points. One, I read something on the Sentinel that uh, stated that according to the state's district report for last year, 82% of PVUSD's 16,287 students, right, are living in poverty. 
right? Uh, and 64 of that, 64 percent of those are English uh, language learners, right? So the importance, right, of ethnic studies, important. This what we're living in today is going to be part of ethnic studies. It's going to be part of that that education that's be is going to be given, right? Um, if we're looking for money and you're looking for all those things, you know the SRO contract can go. That's 1.2 million that's, you know, being left out. So last thing I'm gonna say, uh, a quote by Cesar Chavez, once social change begins, it cannot be reversed. You cannot uneducate the person that I learned to read. You cannot humiliate the person who feels pride and you cannot oppress the people who are not afraid anymore. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Hilda Gazanferi, a junior at Paul Valley High School. I'm here today to ask you why, give, give us a reason why you didn't put the CRE contract back on the agenda. We have asked you to provide a reason. Why aren't you giving us a reason? Why aren't you providing us with evidence? Why aren't you meeting with the teachers and the students in the classrooms? Why are you not taking the time to educate yourselves? Why are you not listening to the members of the Jewish community who are advocating for this contract? If you can't answer these questions, then maybe you should reconsider who is making this decision. You keep t talking about democracy, but you can't seem to implement this in this area. We hope to see the CRA contract back on the agenda. And with the extra time I have, I, I want to address the issue that PV doesn't have a theater. And we are the side with the most performing arts acts. We have folklorical, we have K-pop, we have mariachi, we have, I mean, pretty much all of those. And I can perform. I, I'm performing in the quad, I'm performing in the gym, in the cafeteria, but not in a proper theater. We have to go all the way to Walton High School, to downtown, to perform. And so I would really appreciate if you can address this issue. Thank you so much. Hello, my name is Valeria Hernandez Melchor, and I am a youth justice intern at MILPA and a current student at UCSC studying computer science. I am here to support the reinstating of the CRE program. As a high school student, I did not have the opportunity to take ethnic studies, much less one of like, um, much less a good quality curriculum that the CRE provides. On my own, I learned about my people's history and looked into the history that is much more accurate that than the one written in our old, outdated, biased, and racist textbooks. After seeing the way we have been erased historically, I felt empowered to advocate and to bring my history into light. The personal growth that learning about my roots prompted has made me a proud, brown, indigenous Chicana woman. And it is only because of this that I have been able to survive in such white-dominated environments like computer science. I ask you, the board, whose duty and responsibility is to listen and look out for your community, to listen to your students. For generations, students of color have been stripped of their history and identities, and this program can finally give them the support that they need to feel like they can succeed and to build a healthier community. Thank you. All right, next three speakers. Uh, one is Manuel Bersamen, and I need to uh, clarify whether we have two Miguel Martinez's in the audience. There's just one? Miguel Martinez? They have two cards. Do we have another Miguel in the, in the audience? All right, you're it. And Mike Hawk, Jr. Ready? Manuel Samin, first uh, Asian mayor of the city of Watsonville, first mayor of the city of Watson from a farm worker family. I want to say that the curriculum has always been contested. For a hundred years in Watson, it's been contested. And people of color have not been in the curriculum. The reason why is because usually people in power do not want to empower people of color. So in the in the remarks that I heard earlier, we're going to wait until the superintendent is going to be taught about this issue when this issue already is months old. So I don't know what you're worried about. You insulted the Filipino American professor who developed this curriculum. We Asians will never forget that. And I want to let you guys know, if you want to get what you need, these folks want to pass a bond in November. What you need to do is say, we're not passing your bond until you get the ethnic studies curriculum back. 
that's what you need to do. You, you young people, vote, and you young people tell your parents you can vote. No bond until ethnic studies returns. Watsonville, mayoritariamente hispano, eh, ya hemos dicho, ya hemos reclamado, ya hemos alzado la voz, estamos todos aquí, hemos dicho que queremos. Dr. Holm, no hablemos de democracia, porque aquí si hay algo hay, es precisamente que no hay democracia, vaya. Miren, su agenda, que se quede en casa, se trabaja para la gente, se trabaja por los intereses, y eso no se ve denotado. Se muestra que ni siquiera saben a quién están educando. No es, ego no es necedad, ¿saben qué es? Es egoísmo. You know, uh, los cobardes se van los valientes los quedamos y por eso es que esta noche estamos todos aquí and I hope I really hope this is not the penúltima muchas gracias Mike Hawk The population of Waxonville is Hispanic, so you are here to work with us. You need to show us that you really have the uh, work for democracy, because I see that there is no democracy here with, with you. So please don't take away the ethnic studies for us. Our next three speakers, Eli Romero, Susan Cohen, and Desi Salinas Holtz. I'm here to read comments of a PVS USD student, but quickly want to say that two people who claim I'm, to I'm sorry, yeah, we, can't. Can't, we cannot let public speakers read other people's comments into the public record. You, cause you're more than welcome to That's speak for your behalf. That's happened before. No. That happened last time. Yeah. Students are, some students aren't comfortable reading, so I think that happened at the last meeting. No. And we can't, we can't have that. I'm sorry. Okay, well, you're as free to make your own comments. Jewish, uh, as a Jewish person in the county, and um, I am, um, <laughs> just have to rethink. I, I just want to say that the, that the two people who claim to represent all Jewish people in the, the world, the county, wherever, are, is, is just absolutely kind of ridiculous to imagine that all people think the same way. And the, um, so I and many, many other Jews locally in the country, around the world, are absolutely pro-Palestinian liberation and pro-ethnic studies and believe that this is what we need to have true liberation and true bring equity and understanding. And, and like the student has said, this is where they learn to, to respect themselves and others. This is how they learned to um, be proud. And we need this in our curriculum. Please bring it back. Um, good evening, everybody, everyone. Uh, my name is Desi Salinas Holtz, and I'm a sophomore at Watsonville High School. And I'd like to start by saying I think the board's making, all of you are making a, the wrong decision to not renew the CRE contract. Um, so this is my first year taking eth the ethnic studies class and it has already become one of my favorite classes and I it's one of my most engaging classes too and I think all my classmates share that th same thought um, ethnic studies has taught me a lot about myself and my community and I see the same thing happening with my classmates and it goes to show because if you take a moment to look around there's so many students here and our our voices need to be heard and and all these students here spent, took time out of their evening on a school night to come here, out here and speak up on this topic. And we are, our voices need to be heard. We are tired of just, I'll say like these old adults making decisions when they are not the ones in the classroom. We are the students in the classroom who this is directly affecting. And like I said, I'm a sophomore. So this, this I have two more years and I would like this contract to be renewed so I can have a good education for ethnic studies my next two years. 
Um, and I'd also like to thank my ethnic studies teacher, uh, Mr. Pels, for encouraging all of us out here to speak up for Thanks, this Daddy. topic that needs to be discussed. Thank you. Uh, Eli Romero, where you at? Did he? All right. Next three. <laughs> Carol Turley, Sylvia Perez, and Diego Reese. Good evening. Carol Turley again, lifelong resident of Watsonville. I'm officially announcing my candidacy for trustee area two. <laughs> if you support teaching empathy, if you have respect for district staff, if you find value in exposing our students to various points of view and desire to encourage students to embrace themselves and their heritage, then vote for me. If not, you should vote for the incumbent. And it's fabulous to see so many students here engaged in the process. You should all be proud of yourselves. I am a proud graduate of Watsonville High, class of 80, and when I was your age, I probably wouldn't stand up here. So. Kudos to all of you. Thank you. Hello, board members, and thank you for allowing me to speak today, even though you have cut our half in time. Uh, our time in half, sorry. I'd like to discuss and encourage the board to place the $195 uh, million bond into the November ballot instead of $315 million bond. Now, while a $315 million bond would do a lot more uh, to our school district as a whole, I think we have, to, we have a lot to think about, especially in, in terms of voters and with all the tax additions being in place right now with Measure N being passed. Now, pending the bond's approval, I am here to advocate for Power Row Valley High School and the fact that we desperately need to complete our, our school facilities. Usually the conversation of equity among schools is brought up um, when talking about uh, facilities in our district, but I'd argue that that is a conversation about necessities that we should be having. Mr. Serpo, you are quoted as saying after the last board meeting, quote, right now we are saying there is a need, but we have no proof of that, that need, end quote. Well, I absolutely disagree with that statement. Not only is there overwhelming proof of the need for provisions, but also proof that PVHS needs the money the most. You know PV has no performing arts center. You know we have requested an opportunity to develop a culinary program at PV. You know to date we have lost four students to drowning. I could go on, but since I only have one minute now, I'll leave you with this statement. The Serpa trustees, to say you hear an alleged need but lack proof of this need, is willful ignorance. You know there is a problem of inequity and lack of necessities. You continue to deflect and plead ignorance, knowing we've been coming to the board for years for the same request. Thank you. Um, good evening, my name is Sylvia Perez. I'm a senior attending PV High. I came to talk about how we need more funds for, for Pajaro Valley High School to have the same resources that Watsonville and Aptos both have. We need equity in all high schools, like building a pool. Learning how to swim is essential for students to know because it can save their lives if they are, if they are in any accident. If we do want to learn, we have to pay for swimming lessons instead of learning for free. And since a lot of the community is low income, they cannot afford it. Um, we also need a theater. While Aptos has the Performing Arts Center and Watsonville has the Mellow Center, we have either the gym, the cafeteria, the library, or the small theater room which is both, they're both small. The gym is not the best place for a performance. And if we do want to perform, we have to go all the way to, to the other side of the city. It is unfair that we are the only school that has an unfinished camp campus without many resources. Thank you. And bring, bar bring back the CRE contact. All right, next three. Mark Mendoza Luengas, Bobby Pelt, and Austin Martin. Hello, Board of Trustees. I am deeply angered and annoyed at the board's decision of not renewing the CRE contract. The school board needs to realize the huge impact this biased decision will have on future ethnic studies classes. The board decided that after hearing that the CRE contract was criticized as anti-Semitic, they knew that they wanted to shut down the career account after hearing this. Refusing to renew the contract will result in greater issues for the future, such as students not be 
being able to have an ethnic studies class, which take note, ethnic studies is a graduation requirement. Without ethnic studies, students cannot graduate. Essentially, what the board wants is for students to receive watered down education. The school board is allowing a biased decision to control the education of future generations. The community who spoke about the CRE curriculum being anti-Semitic don't have children in the school district. So why are we essentially listening to them? Shouldn't the board listen to the actual students and teachers who have dedicated their lives to bringing better education to this district? What the school board is upholding is white supremacy. The school board at this moment is trying to have all the power over students, teachers, and parents. They're refusing to listen to the students because at the moment they're uncomfortable with themselves. So why should the board listen to various students in the district who are currently fighting for education? The Thanks, school board Mark. has a fear. A fear that if they listen to students that they will lose their power. Thank you. Is this Next really speaker. what the school district is upholding? Right, Even if the up. board refuses these actions they have already proven themselves to uphold these ideals by their actions. Their actions were shutting down students, teachers, and parents who are actively trying to save the educated school. Because if we don't, who will? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bobby Pellows, Watsonville High. Um, President Acosta, at the last board meeting, you stated that we all need to treat everyone with dignity and respect in this room so everybody's voice can be heard, even if you disagree. But I'd like to remind you that this all started because you slandered Dr. Tintiango Kubales by suggesting that she is anti-Semitic without evidence. Where's your respect for her? I've dragged myself to every board meeting since September to speak to you and I have yet to get a single response. Where's your respect for me? The community has consistently requested that the CRE contract be added to the agenda, but you keep blocking it. Where's your respect for democracy? But worst of all is how you treated the students. You don't respond to their emails, you cut off their speeches at one minute, and you deny their request. Where is your respect for our kids? <laughs> Trusty Acosta, the most disrespectful person in this room is you. So the next time, so the next time you want to talk about treating people with dignity and respect, even when we don't agree, look in the mirror. <laughs> We're going to vote you out in November. Yeah. Support CRE. Thank you. Uh, hello again, board. My name is Austin Martin. I'm here for the third time to actually bring back the CRE program. To, for me to come to these meetings, I had to sacrifice my time. I also sacrificed my time when I put up flyers to get the community involved to come to these meetings. And even though Last time I was at this meeting, I was remarked as brainwashed by people who don't agree with me. I still choose to come to these meetings. The reason why is because I find it important to bring CRE to our, to, uh, to our students at PVUSD. At this point, I don't know how much more evidence you need to bring that CRE contract. It is what the community wants. We have sent emails, spoken at board meetings, even been on the news, and still no discussion to bring it back, not even putting it on the agenda. All of this because you decide to believe false accusations of anti semitism with no evidence, with no evidence whatsoever over what the community wants from you. I ask you to show the public evidence of anti semitism in the CRE program because I have never seen it personally. I want you to explain your reasoning on to why you refuse to bring it back to contract even with all of the community support. I will continue to speak on this topic until we get our support we have asked for. I finished my statement with asking you to please look over the CRE program and, and please look over your agenda to serve the community. Thank you. All right, next three. Matt Lopez, Edward Guerrero, and Yesenia Jimenez. Hi, my name is Yesenia Jimenez. I just want to say how frustrating this meeting has been for y'all to move up like the superintendent stuff ahead on the agenda over the fact that you knew that students were going to be here. You already started late. They need to wake up and be here for school. You guys say you care about the students, but a lot of you are just fake politicians trying to further your career. Um, it's also extremely frustrating for you to say your reason is that you want the new superintendent to come prepared for what she's walking into. You guys are going to pay her over $200,000. She should be prepared to come into whatever these students yeah. want. Okay? Yeah. For that salary, I would be. Okay? The other thing is they have been coming for months to ask for this. That's just an excuse. You guys should have voted on this a long time ago. One student brought up how you guys are upholding white supremacy if you don't understand how literally take an ethnic studies course. Um, <laughs> What else do I have to say? I don't know, I'm just pissed, so I rushed through this, but I made all of my points, and I'm just gonna stop, that way kids can go up. Yeah. 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 
Hello. This is my second time coming here, and I feel disgusted that I have to come again. How are you doing at your job? Your job is to represent us, not your own desires. Many people here have come multiple times to tell you to renew the contract, and yet you still don't, like... Come on, dog. <laughs> dog. That's all. Thank you, thank you. All right, Max Barasa, Gabriel Barasa, and Sofia Gomez. Good evening, Board of Trustees. My representative is Trustee Flores, and I'm from Area 5. I am beyond disillusioned that the issue is not back on the agenda. I'd assume that after all our hard work, this issue would be acknowledged. But it appears that the Board didn't value the effort from their community as the CRE contract is still not on the agenda. What will it take for you to listen to your community? A trustee is a public figure. They were elected by the public and they are for the public. So do your job and listen to what the public actually wants. Acosta, you are the president. Your priority should be listening to the public. If you really care about the students, the parents, and the teachers, please add CRE back to the agenda. If you don't, the public will notice. We will remember by the time elections arrive. You have already angered the public. Don't continue making the wrong moves. Thank you. So last time I ripped up my speech because you limited our time. This time I wrote two speeches, one for two minutes and one for one. We're prepared. My name is Gabriel Barraza. I live in Area 5. And I see that once again, Trustee Acosta has limited our time to speak. She also tried to make some rules for safety instead of accommodating the public and moving to a larger venue, knowing that this is a popular issue. She's trying to stop us from demanding the right for our children to be educated in a manner that the community supports. Just know that the more you try to hold on to power in this crooked way, the more you will increase your opposition. We will vote you out in November. And anyone else who has supported your undemocratic actions when the time comes for their election. So um, this evening I had a band practice today, which I couldn't attend because I wanted to come here and help my community. Um, so I went up to my band teacher and I said, um, hey, I'm sorry I can't come to the practice today. And he said, are you serious? I can literally, in the classroom, I can be there and I can ignore you as well. It, it won't be any different. I can ignore you just as they will ignore you in the, in the meeting. I'm like, oh, wow, you're right. Um, so don't ignore us. You will get voted out. The community is right here. We're all speaking to you. Don't ignore our voices. We need to be heard. And like my friend Mark said, you are actively upholding white supremacy. And we need ethnic studies back on the agenda. We need it. What's, what's to lose? We, I'm lear we're learning about our backgrounds. What's to lose about that? And I'm up here talking to politicians, but I should be feeling like I'm talking to my friends and like I'm having a conversation with my friends. I'm talking to politicians, and I'm very disappointed. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Ellen Garfield, Dora Rosen, and Bill S. <clears throat> you ready for me? Good evening, I'm Ellen Garfield, and I'm a Jew who works with Pajaro Valley Teens. 
My group, Santa Cruz Jews for a Free Palestine, over 60 local Jewish community members, along with the group Jews Against White Supremacy, wrote a letter to the board urging you to renew the CRE. For 76 years, Israel has confiscated books and manuscripts from Palestinian homes. Libraries are now targeted in Gaza, and archivists are murdered. This intentional destruction of cultural heritage is recognized as a war crime. Why would Kim DeSerpa's campaign donors not want this history taught at PVUSD? One of them publicly, publicly made dehumanizing remarks about Palestinian civilians in the paper, while another donor opposing a ceasefire made Islamophobic remarks at a city council meeting. Of, of course these two don't want Palestinian history to be taught. The recent claims of anti-Semitism are baseless. Stop weaponizing Jewish pain to promote your racist ideology. Teaching students, teaching students that Palestinians exist is not anti-Semitic. Hello, my name is Dora Rosen. As you might have guessed from my name, I'm also Jewish. I'm a member of Jewish Voice for Peace and have been for 20 years. I'm also a member of the Reform Congregation of Temple Beth El and Aptos. My family has been here for four generations and the fifth is about to come on. My cousin Bob was a union organizer right here in Watsonville area. And not only that, his wife, my cousin Barbara Stern, and her, excuse me, and the mother-in-law, Emma Gelder Stern, wrote books together. And they were about ethnic studies. They were young adult books. It was a whole series set in a fictionalized place that was based on Santa Cruz County and Watsonville and the Pajaro Valley. And all the different ethnic groups were represented. And they wrote these, this series in the 60s and 70s to show how people can work together and to show the importance of knowing where you're from. I hope you will take that to account. Stand up for CRE. Thank you. Good evening, board, members of the public, buenos uh, tardes. My name is Bill. I'm a Jewish person living in Santa Cruz, and I work in Watsonville. And um, I want to just say that I support the reinstatement of the CRE contract as a Jewish person who has had the privilege of knowing where my family comes from back several generations. It It's hard to say what it's like to understand the beauty and dignity of the people you come from on a deep level and understand how that gives you a perspective on your own future. And all of these students who have come up to speak deserve that. Everybody deserves that. And I absolutely reject board members using me and my community against these students. <laughs> Teaching that Palestinian people, that any people have a history, is not anti-Semitism. I give your time. Yeah. Sylvie Stein, Bill Beecher, Gilbert Stein. Looks like to me. Okay. Oh, no. Sylvie. Sylvie was first. Okay. Oh, no. I would like you to speak first, Gil Stein. All right. Thank you. I'm the infamous Gil Stein. Uh, I've received a little bit of attention here today. And just to be clear, I am not opposed to ethnic studies, never have been opposed to ethnic studies. I'm opposed to the CRE contract, and there's a big difference. And there were reasons why Governor Newsom and Superintendent Thurmond rejected the draft of ethnic studies co-sponsored or signed by uh, the CRE consultant. It was not a right-wing conspiracy. It was based on facts. For example, despite the fact that the majority of crimes in this country, based, hate crimes in this country based on religion are against Jews, the majority, anti-Semitism was mentioned only twice in the 500 pages of that curriculum, as was the Holocaust. Je President Biden has issued a national strategy to combat anti-Semitism, and CRE opposes that. CRE is not the only place where you can get ethnic studies. I think the board did the right decision back in September, and I don't know why these people weren't here when it was on the agenda then. That is democracy. It was on the agenda. The, the board voted for it, voted to 
rescind the contract, not to renew it. And I think that it's a good decision to leave the uh, superintendent to work with the board to see what we can do now in the future. Thank you. I'd like to thank all of you guys for coming tonight, but you got to realize there's a board policy for putting stuff on the agenda. You have to send a letter to the superintendent. We've sent the letter. Good. Yeah. Now, by that same token, the board president under the Brown Act does have the ability to tell this crowd that they have to turn in a letter if they want to have something put on the agenda. She has not done that in the last four meetings I've been to, and I've brought this up before. I think that's dereliction of duty. Now, I also suggested at the last meeting that the Pajaro Valley Historical Association is willing to teach you a class on ethnic diversity. I haven't heard from you. Don't you want to learn about your background? I'd sure like to teach you. My name is Sylvie Stein. I am a white Jewish settler on this land. I come here with deep respect for the youth of this school district who have been voicing clearly and beautifully that they want ethnic studies back now. Gil Stein plays the victim to undermine this community's call for ethnic studies, yet Gil is a notorious racist. And in November, as Israel bombed refugee camps, hospitals, and schools in Gaza, he was quoted in the Good Times, he had the Good Times take this out. He was I have a screenshot, he was quoted in the Good Times as saying this, as as far as civilians in Gaza, the Israeli military will have to do what it has to do. Gil Stein essentially called for the genocide of over 32,000 Palestinians in five months. It is wild that he would show his face in public, let alone claim moral high ground on ethnic studies. Gil Stein, Raj Shorenstein, and Kim DeSerpa, you do not represent Jews. You represent racist, pro-genocide Zionists. Yeah. You are the least trustworthy people to speak on what is and isn't anti-Semitism or any form of oppression. And of course you don't want a liberated ethnic studies that could expose your Zionism for what it is. I will go on record saying repackage Nazism. To all other school members joining them in robbing youth of the education they want, shame on you. You should pay these students for educating you on how to do your job. Bring back ethnic studies now. Free Palestine. All power to these youth behind me. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I'm going to have to call the meeting to order. If we have disruptions again and we can't hear everybody's comments, we will adjourn the meeting. And we really don't want to do that and cease and halt the district's business or hearing your comments. Next three speakers, please. Grisel Santos, Isel Barasa, Maximiliano Barasa. Max already went, yeah. Third one will be Dr. Lourdes Barasa. My name is Ishan, and this is my fifth time coming. Uh, why do I need to come five times to tell you to bring back CRE? As a student, I'm extremely disappointed that you aren't listening to us. How is this a democratic process when you're ignoring the community? This is what a dictator does, and you, as a school board trustees, should be modeling better behavior for students and the community. You have not been transparent and, exclus and inclusive to the community, and you do not deserve to sit on this board. I'm a student from the University of California, Berkeley. I did not have the privilege to have ethnic studies taught when I went to Watsonville High School, and that was a disservice to me and all the students who were with me. The students who didn't know where their history came from, who didn't know they mattered, who deserved to be seen and represented. I draw from the amazing youth activists who are here today fighting for this, because it is their right. They deserve to be seen. They deserve to be represented. <laughs> All I gotta say is this is our district, this is our education, and it's your job to represent us, all right? And also, if when we talk about MLK, MLK also said that liberation can only be demanded by the oppressed. It will not be given by the oppressor. And with that, freedom will be taken. It cannot be given. Freedom is taken. 
With that, I cede my time. Uh, good evening, my name is Dr. Barraza, and like many people here, I have been coming for, for months and months and months, which is ridiculous. This, is, this shouldn't have taken this long. Uh, I've been here so many times I've lost count. And this is why I'm disgusted with the lack, lack of transparency, especially from you, uh, Trustee Acosta, that uh, you just ignore us, don't tell us any reason why. Uh, for months where you've been ignoring us with no explanation, that is not a democratic process, Trustee Acosta, this is tyranny. You are running an autocratic board that is twisting rules, putting obstacles, using delayed tactics, and seriously lacking transparency. There's absolutely no reason why to deny, why to delay this issue for the new assistant, uh, for the new uh, superintendent. We have one now. The, 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 the one that we have right now can deal with this. You don't need to delay it any longer. And Trustee Soto, when the board decided to not renew the CRE contract, you did it arbitrarily. So it wasn't like, oh, we're going to do this decision now arbitrarily. No, you did that already before. Um, and several board member trustees said that they care about the kids, and yet you're ignoring them. How does that show you care about them? And I'll just leave it at that. Alyssa Rangel and Bridget Phantom. Do I just like speak into this? Or? Oh, okay. Right. Hello, my name is Alyssa Richard Hell, and I am a current senior at Watsonville High School, taking the ethnic literature, ethnic studies course. This course has impacted my life greatly. It's given me the chance to speak out for what I believe in and learn about my history as well. You, do not, you not voting to bring the CIE contract back shows me that you don't care about students and teachers' voices. I've seen peers continue to fight for this change, but see nothing happen. Seeing you guys dismiss our constant pleas to bring back the CRE contract has de decreased our trust in the board properly representing us and our district. But I know my peers will continue to fight for the CRE contract. And I would like to thank my ethnic studies teacher, Mr. Pals, who continues to encourage his students to fight for change and have a voice. Um. So, Acosta, your statement was a little bit confusing for me. You said that our voices were heard, but I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that. What does it mean you'll be making the ethnic studies curriculum a top priority? To be clear, our curriculum was actually never the issue. The concern lay in the sudden canceling of our partnership with the Liberated Ethnic Studies consor uh, Curriculum Consortium, uh, which was ripped from the teachers and the district staff who'd been engaging in our CRE training for the past two years. So to clarify for me, please, I know you can't speak, but just you know, nod or something. Uh, you're going to prioritize the contract or the curriculum. So if it's the contract, could you look at me? If it's the curriculum, could you look at me? Neither. Okay. So uh, that's fine. At a minimum, thank you for meeting with Bernie Gomez. This is an important first step in something called reconciliation. For harm done, if you are unclear of the harm done, allow me to represent to you the concepts of paternalism and power hoarding, both tools and tenets of white supremacy. When confronted with fear-inducing changes, those with relative power approach the subordinates with the belief those beneath them are not capable of making decisions about their own destinies. They diminish their perspectives, experiences, and ideas of those outside of the domain of power power and they neglect transparency because they do not believe themselves accountable to the huddled masses. Uh, throughout this process, you've revealed yourselves to be both domineering and patronizing, and you've shown your allegiance to supremacist constructs, all of which, in my opinion, should render you ineligible for public office, but at a minimum, at a minimum, should encourage your participation in the Thank CRE you, training upon renewal of the contract. Now, to the folks in the room Thank who up, are Bridget. showing up at the board, <laughs> <laughs> at the board what power really looks like. So again, to the folks in the room who are showing the board what power really looks like, you are part of a long legacy of love, wisdom, and power. Thank you for your advocacy. I will now move us to our um, employee organization comments. This is the time that we hear from our employee organizations. And we will start with 8.1 PBFT, Pajaro Valley Federation of Teachers. Welcome, Nelly. Hi. <clears throat> All right. Good evening. Nelly. Um, Nelly. <clears throat> do you mind waiting a second so we can hear you? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, we had some doubles. We had a me Miguel, Eli, Maximilio, Matthew, Mike. Okay, thank you. Sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay. All right. All right, good evening, board. Uh, president Acosta, um, I'm Nelly Baquera Boggs, president of the PVFT. Uh, I'm just going to speed through some of this. So, um, Mr. S Trustee Scow, you're right, democracy works through organi organizing. Um, we unionists use, know this, and um, our parents and our students that have attended tonight also know this. And so I think it's amazing how they are beginning to really learn how to advocate for their educational rights um, in you know, asking to have the ethnic studies contract brought back. I, again, want to thank um, President Acosta for organizing a thoughtful visit to Modesto City Schools along with Dr. Contreras. We're hopeful for the pr um, positive steps as we move forward into this um, rest of the school year and then to the new one and um, to hopefully collaborate uh, for improved working and learning conditions for our learning community. Trustee Soto, we agree that Dr. Con Contreras is aware that, you know, they should, that she should be aware of important issues in our district. One that we have quite a few, because <laughs> we have a lot of work. Um, so one is um, this one, this item here that has dragged out now for months. Um, the Federation, you've heard me talk about this for many years now, the Federation is founded on social justice. And it is unjust to have allowed two misinformed individuals disrupt, disrupt a school year's worth of valuable PD for our administrators and continued education for our students. The other important item is the unfair labor practice by the district um, for having taken wages, so wage theft, from educators who took their contractual right of personal necessity days. This deduction in pay for those teachers are, is also going to negatively affect, impact their full year's credit towards their retirement. So they're not gonna get a full year's credit towards their retirement because you have allowed the district to steal their wages. And um, that impacts their retirement. So, I mean, if you're an educator, you know that we, this is our work, this is our profession, and we work really hard, long hours, and we deserve that retirement. So you, those of you who are educators on this panel, are accomplices to allowing this district to conduct wage theft and impact these teachers' wages, their retirement. You'll see an agenda item 9.7 that's going to ask you to approve the need for hiring teachers without a teaching credential. Well, your inability, your inaction in stopping this arbitration that we're going to go into is one of the reasons why this, there's 54 requests for, um, you know, so 54 positions that could be a non-credentialed teacher filling in. We, we admire people that come into education that decide that they're going to come into this as a career change, and they're gonna do it through maybe an internship, get a waiver, but this act or inaction on your guys' behalf of stopping this arbitration has pushed people out, people that are credentialed, people that our students need. Um, and you're doing this, <laughs> because you um, are allowing the district to further dig their heels and waste very much needed public education funds that our students need on this corrupt case. That a corrupt previous assistant soup of human resources made and that you're continuing to defend over 20 years of past practice. So that's one of those other things that Dr. Contreras will also need to be aware of. And then, as the elected caretakers of our district, we ask you for this list of items. 
One, put the CRE contract back on this agenda. There is, I believe from, and I, and I think that those of you who met, who went to Modesto could also see, would also agree that that school district would have approved this consultant contract. Dr. Contreras, I don't understand, how, I wouldn't, I, I can't, I wouldn't, I don't even know why there would be an, a, a reason to not bring that back. So you could do that before she return, before she takes over in May, you could do that favor for her, bring it back and let's get started. Two, acknowledge that we have a right to taking our personal necessity days and we shouldn't have our wages stolen. Three, don't allow SELPA to make unscrupulous moves like shutting down a life skills class at the end of this school year at EA Hall. Our families and our students need these programs. And, and the excuse being, oh, it's, it's just business. Four, that um, you return the three minute comments that we used to have for um, public comment time for our, our public, that before, doc, you know, since Dr. Rodriguez isn't here anymore to control y'all. So I'd like to have that back. And five, I would love to see you use your political willpower to talk to the airport and get them to make some moves to finish PV High School. It's been a long time. Thank you. Thank you, Nellie. Do we have anyone here from um, CSEA, California School Employees Association? No. no. Um, 8.3, Pavan, Pajaro Valley Association of Managers. Yep, please come on up. Nope. Nope. Go. No. Nope. And 8.4, CWA, Communication Workers of America, our Substitute Teachers Union. Well, ah, there you are. I mean, I, you know, it was interesting to me tonight before I introduce myself to hear all of the students talking and I have to say you have some very eloquent students and if any of them are still out there in the hallway let me tell you something one of my heroes said once si se puede okay anyway all right so let me tell you who I am I haven't met any of you yet my name is Nancy Biagini um, and I'll give you a bit of my background. Um, I spent 40 years in the labor movement. I was supposed to be retired. <laughs> I served both as a uh, Communication Workers of America international representative, both on the West Coast and in Washington, D.C. And prior to that, I was a local president for CWA Local 9423, as well as a secretary, treasurer, chief steward, and just about every other committee and title you can hold within the union. And during that time frame, um, my brothers tease me about being a professional student, so I'm in the right place, right? Um, I got my master's degree in organizational development and knowledge management. When I retired, I decided to give back to my hometown, which, sorry, Valley people here, it's in Santa Clara. And um, I worked with our planning commission, which I'm currently on, historic projects, and I've helped elect school board members. So I bring a wealth of experience and background um, when I came into the job that I do now. And for a little bit of background, um, substitutes here at Pajaro Valley reached out to CWA Local 9423, I want to say it was about 15 or 20 years ago. And that's how our story began. It was a healthy one until, sadly, and I'll just be blunt and honest, uh, last year, our local was put into receivership because of a lot of things that were missed and not done um, properly. I'll just put it that way. Uh, Washington, D.C. reached out to me. Um, okay, they kind of bent my arm and quoted to me what I used to always quote to my family. Ignore the long hours. It's not a job. It's a cause. And they convinced me to come out of retirement, along with uh, my fellow local president from the same local who came right after me, to go back, local was put in receivership, rebuild my home local all over again from the ground up. 
and that's where we found out how many things were missed at Pajaro Valley and some of our other units. Um, but it's healthy once again. I'm so happy that we have two trained stewards who I have to say, Mike, I said this to you when you first came in, your instincts are so right on, I'm not sure that I could train you much more than what you already do. Um, but they stepped up and they've done a yeoman's job of bringing Louie and I up to speed on substitute teacher issues. And um, I have to say, Dr. Horn, you quoted to home, you quoted two of my favorite people, Frederick Douglass. I've used that quote how many times that um, the one about, well, I used to always say power never concedes graciously, but it's the same concept, right? Um, it never concedes without a demand. But there's another one I like to quote from him. If there's no struggle, there's no progress, you know that one. And of course, Martin Luther King, another one of my heroes about the arc of moral universe, that it's long, but it always bends towards justice. And that's what we are about in Local 9423, once again, with Louie and I. And by the way, I'm kind of number two, Louie's number one. Back in the day, I was his boss, now he's my boss, it's a lot of fun. Anyway, but um, it is about justice. And it's about doing the right thing. And that's what we're here for. Um, it applies to kids just like it applies to working stiffs. I understand your job is difficult. Trust me, I do. But if there is no struggle, there is no process. And it will bend towards justice. So um, let me just leave you with this. I am really looking forward to working on some of the issues that I'm very aware of with the substitutes. A big one is communications between HR and new substitutes and the consistency that is required. And I'm also looking so much forward, is she still here? Yeah, to working with my sister unions at PVFD. Hi, Nellie and Radhika, is she still here? She's not here. Ah, that is. Anyway, I'm looking forward to working with them. We expect that the sisters will all be working together and mutually supportive. And I'll leave you with the inimitable words that my friend Mike Floor left you with last week. Get ready. We are coming. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy and Mike. Um, we will now move to action item 9.2. Week of Adult Education, April 7th through April, 20, uh, April 7th through April 13th, 2024. This report will be presented by the Director of Watsonville Aptos Santa Cruz Adult Ed, Dr. Nancy Bilicich. Thank you so much. Um, President Acosta, trustees, Superintendent Sheckman, cabinet, Adult Education Week is coming when we get back from vacation. And you have in front of you a proclamation that I'm not going to read the whole thing. I just think that um, you need to know that adult education started in 1856 at St. Mary's uh, Cathedral in San Francisco. And this is, it continues to evolve. Um, for us, at adult education here, our cosmetology program is doing well. Um, we have students that have graduated that some of you saw graduate last year. We have another group this year. And they've passed their state board and now they have jobs. So it's been very uh, productive. We have our special citizenship grant um, with the Community Action Board and we're working on that. That's one of 64 nationwide. We're really excited. And we are in the process of trying to develop an LVN program, which would be the first one in the county. And it's taken a lot of work. Our um, nursing, um, I don't know what, coordinator is really working hard trying to figure out all the things and all the requirements at the state level. So we're doing well there. We have a pre-apprenticeship program that is in operation at the Watsonville Downtown Center. We have 18 students involved there. Uh, we have a math specialist class at Cabrillo College. We have a great partnership with Expanded Learning where we're going to have uh, all the students in high school learn how to drive. 
So we're, we're happy about that. And I think uh, right now we have about 3,200 students duplicated. But um, Adult Education Week is coming. You have the proclamation. And we greatly appreciate the board's support. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nancy Vilsich. Um, we have any public speakers on this item? Yes, we do. We have one, and it's Nellie Vaquetta Boggs. How are you? Good, good. good evening. Thank you. Um, adult education, we are, our, this district now covers all of the adult education in the county of Santa Cruz. So we have, um, we represent members who only teach at um, Santa Cruz City locations. Um, so that's pretty significant for our district. That's a, a, a wide you know, range. I mean, it's the entire city, county of Santa Cruz. Um, this program, like any education program, is nothing without its educators and its support staff. So um, adult education programs are a wonderful way for a community to build workforce. I know that our community benefits from the people that go through our programs. Uh, we have um, ESL classes. We have a very large immigrant community here in um, Watsonville and it of various languages. And so this is very, very helpful to have ESL available to our adult learners. Many, and just like stated in this um, proclamation here, uh, it's, it, it's many of these adults also might have their own children who attend our schools. So it is a wonderful win for our district to have this um, reach across our community. I would love to see our adult ed teachers um, have the opportunity to become permanent. They are, um, it, they're forcibly refused <laughs> uh, hours that would put them on a path towards permanency because once they reach a certain number of hours a week, they would be entitled to health care benefits. And what this does is it impacts our ESL classes, especially, where um, you might have several levels. I'm a bilingual teacher. I'm an ESL teacher um, by training as well. And so having multiple levels is not conducive to the most, it's not an optimal learning environment. So. We hope that our adult ed will also invest in this, um, in this area and offer our community of learners, adult learners, uh, ESL classes where they're not with more than two language levels. Thank you. Thank you, Nellie. And that was our last public speaker on that. I'll bring it back to the board for um, discussion, comments, deliberation. Trustee Bolano-Scow. I just got a question. Thank you for that. Um, is our enrollment, how has that been going? Is it steady, declining, in increasing up and down? Well, right now it's it's um, higher than usual. But again, I have duplicated enrollment, meaning that you could have two classes. So I gave you a figure of 32. I just asked before I came, how many students do we have? 32, 15. But that means you could take two classes. You might be in a high school diploma and an ESL class. So you may be counted twice. I didn't get... Uh, single number and how did so th is that um up from previous up from years last year, a little uh -huh. bit up from last year at this point okay all right um well great i mean I, I'm, thanks for those comments nelly as well um we got to support celebrate so let let this proclamation be proclaimed across the entire valley there we go thank you trustee de serpa Hi, Nancy Bilicic, Hi. Dr. Bilicic. Thanks for coming before us tonight with this resolution. As you know, for 14 years, I've wholeheartedly supported the activities of the adult school, and we're really proud of all of the programming that you have there for our community, including allowing people to learn English, to get GEDs, and all of the workforce development that you've done. I'm really excited about the cosmetology program and all the new things that are happening, and I would be remiss if I didn't do a shout out for the bird watchers. <laughs> That's a favorite in the whole county among many people, so. It really is, and right now, they have one of their paths cut off. They used to be by West Marine, and the 
county is working on construction so they've cut the path but as soon as it's I've been okay. assured that once they finish the construction it'll be they'll have access again yeah well thank you for all your work and all the years that you've devoted we appreciate you thank you thank you trustee to serve trustee dr. Holm I just wanted to say thank you for all the work that you're doing with adult education um, you know it, it the classes that adult education offers makes a pivotal difference in so many people's lives. I remember, you know, way, 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 way back when, before I was a nurse or anything like that, it's like I was able to take a, a typing class through an adult education program. And that enabled me to go further in my career at the time, which was in computer development, uh, internet development. Um, and that opened up a lot of opportunities for me which ultimately led me here. Yeah. So, so um, thank you for the work that you and your staff are doing, um, and the, especially the, you know, the hardworking you know, people who are attending classes, who are taking classes, who are supporting the classes being held. It, it does make a difference, so thank you. You know, when you think about it, they go to work all day and then they come at night and that takes a lot of dedication and they a lot of times you say well why I want to improve my English I want a better job I want to get my high school diploma and I can't say enough about our teachers and our classified staff they are very enthusiastic very um, customer service is a top top-notch team it's a team effort no doubt thank you trustee dr. home trustee Dodge jr. I'd just like to say thank you again, Dr. Nancy Bilicich. I've only been here for a couple of years, but um, before I, I, I've sat in the seat, uh, I know your dedication to adult ed. I know your dedication to the Pajaro Valley, uh, the city of Watsonville. Uh, the name read, the heart is on this building because you led the effort with our community. You brought a lot of stakeholders together to make it happen. You know, I've sat, I, I sat in on those meetings and um, you, you made it happen. Uh, I know you do a lot of other things in the city uh, on your free time, but I also wanted to say uh, um, thank you, Mr. Coach Sunderland, who, who's driver is an ed teacher, and yeah. um, you know, Mr. Uh, Mr. Jones. I forgot his first name because he was Ron. my history teacher. Ron. But um, I just want to acknowledge him too, and uh, you guys are the reason why I'm here. And to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Trish. Trustee Dodge Jr., anyone else? Go ahead. Trustee Flores. Well, just to say thank you, and I you know, definitely would support this. You're, you're very welcome. Trustee Soto. Thank yeah. you, Trustee Flores. Thank you, Nancy, for all your hard work and keeping this, you know, the whole adult ed program uh, alive in the county. I mean, we've expanded from the district and now to the county, so that uh, speaks volumes. So keep it up the good work. It has its challenges, but it is great. Yeah, I'm sure it does. <laughs> um, thank you, Vice President Soto. Um, thank you, Nancy, for being here this evening. Um, and I know I say it every year, and I'm going to say, I'm just going to really just echo what um, Vice President Soto just said, um, but I can't let it go. That Thank you for taking that on and taking on the Santa Cruz City Schools when Santa Cruz City Schools just no longer wanted it, and you stepped up and weren't going to let that to happen for the county as a whole and you saw that and the need and you deserve to be commended for that so thank you for doing that well i appreciate you at the last meeting you saw there's santa cruz trustees there too and it's mm -hmm. like they're interested i mean it's it's like adult ed is accountable to both boards i mean this is our board this is you know but they want to know what's going on in Santa Cruz. What have you done over here? And what are you doing to our site? And there's just a lot of things. But it's, uh, but I couldn't do it without my team. I have a great classified team. The teachers are really dedicated. And you, the board. So thank you. Appreciate it. And here we go. Adult Ed Week when we get back. Yes. Well, we have to vote on it. Yes, um, you do. Um, <laughs> But I do, yes, thank you again. And that was an amazing meeting. Uh, just to, And I, I believe I made that in my board comments back then to see how many different leaders, not just countywide, but federal leaders, state leaders that attended or had their representatives in attendance and how much they actually really care and recognize the need for adult ed and the importance of it. So 
good job on that meeting thank you that that was impressive you know when they you invite them and you don't know if they're gonna come but they do in fact uh, Zoe Lofgren was here when um, I don't know talking about immigration you know uh, about a year ago and so there are a lot of people that are involved Jimmy Panetta I mean Zach Friend, all of them mm -hmm. and it's really nice to see that we have city support county support makes a difference and of course your support yeah. so thank you and I also just wanted to also piggyback on what Trustee Dodge Jr. said in thanking you for your work that you did to rename your wing to the Rhea DeHart wing. I mean, she was, aside from you, <laughs> probably maybe, maybe a little more, I don't know, she, the largest advocate in this whole community for adult ed, and she really stood by your side with that and supported you full-heartedly, and she really... She was adult ed, aside from you. She was adult ed, there's no doubt. And I know her family was very touched too. Yeah. You know, that we have the Rhea DeHart wing and it makes all the difference. Yeah, and thank you for including me as well in those meetings. Okay. But appreciative. All right, so that's all the discussion and deliberation. And do I have a motion to approve? I move to approve. A second. I have a first and I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? Seeing none, it carries seven zero. Thank you. Thank you Nancy. very much. Thanks, Our next item, nine point three, approve resolution number twenty two dash twenty three dash thirty six, recognizing April as National Bilingual Multilingual Learner Advocacy Month. Then this report will be presented to us by our Director of Equity, State and Federal Program and Accountability, Mr. Berman. Welcome. Good evening, President Acosta, Superintendent Sheckman, and members of the board. Um, I get the second leg in the recognition train. Um, it is my honor to bring forth the um, recognition of April 24 as National Bilingual Multilingual Learner Advocacy Month. Um, to, be, to be brief, I'll just read a few of the items. Whereas Pajaro Valley Unified School District takes pride in joining educational institutions throughout the country and recognizing April as April 24 as National Bilingual Multilingual Learner Advocacy Month. And whereas National Bilingual Multilingual Learner Advocacy Month is an opportunity to, to draw attention to the persistent inequities between bilingual multilingual learners and native English speaking students. And whereas Pajaro Valley recognizes more than 11,430 students and their families within our district that are becoming or are multilingual. Um, and whereas uh, PVUSD um, houses more than 21 languages within its boundaries. Um, be it resolved that PVUSD proclaims this month as National Bilingual Multilingual Learner Month and continues to strengthen our education and focus on bilingual multilingual learners. And a couple of plugs. I would like to invite you all to May 2nd Seal of Biliteracy Ceremony. We are very excited. We are working with counselors in our high schools right now and we already have more students who have been cleared to receive the seal this year than last year. And, and this is exciting, I think we're gonna get even more languages than we've had before. Um, represented. Um, and one more plug, we also have a couple more opportunities next year for students at, at more schools um, to enroll their um, kindergartners in dual language programs, including um, uh, sites where English speaking students can come and become and, and join the biliteracy pathway. Uh, thank you very much, and I ask for your approval. Thank you, Mr. Berman. And we have one public speaker to this item, Nellie. Good evening. Um, so we, I think this is, I, I love that now in education, bilingualism is appreciated, it's valued. Um, porque ser bilingüe es bonito. And um, Spanish was my first language, I didn't, I, just we, I, it was spent my first language. That's what I spoke at home, and what was not spoken at school. Um, so, uh, and when I started uh, school at that time in the '70s, um, bilingualism wasn't something that was valued at school, and so you would get scolded. I would, you know, they'd be like, "You get to wear the dunce cap because you're not speaking English." Um, and so imagine being a kindergartner and having to wear a hat <laughs> and that, you know, in the corner. Um, so I think it's wonderful that we have bilingual programs. I actually started teaching in a bilingual program up in Northern California 
and my both my children started off in the dual immersion program in Chico Unified um, before we moved here. So, and it was sad because I couldn't have them in the dual program um, here when we when I first moved to this um, area to teach because it just didn't the I was a single parent. I, I just the, the schedules didn't didn't um, align. Um, and so they went to Minty where I taught, um, and that was not a bilingual program. It's it's just uh, um, you can have a conversation with my son. He had some strong feelings about how there was not a bilingual program there. Um, anyways, I just want to say that I think it's wonderful that we've gotten to this point in education where bilingualism is something that is valued because it is part of our um, national history, and. Um, our students, this, this sort of ties into ethnic studies where it's like part of being valued as a whole person is all of our history needs to come with us um, because that's who we are, a part of who we are. Thank you. Thank you, Nellie. Um, I will bring it back to the board now for discussion, questions, comments, deliberation from the board. Uh, just a quick question. Thank you, Mr. Berman. Uh, when is that uh, bioliteracy CEO event? Uh, has that been scheduled time and place yet? Uh, yeah, it'll be at, thank you for reminding me, Watsonville High will be in the Mellow Center um, 6 o'clock on May 2nd. 6 p.m., Mellow Center? Yeah, Thursday night. Make a motion to approve. <laughs> thank you, Trustee Bolano Scow. Uh, tr Trustee Dr. Holm. I'll second. But thank before you. I even. Um, so you know, I've, I've attended the last couple of seals of biliteracy events, and they're they're amazing. So I, I, I would strongly encourage the other members of the the board to attend that. Do you happen to have an idea of how many students will be honored this year? So far, we have last year. I think we had 108, mm -hmm. and so far, I think I counted yesterday. We had 114 cleared, right. um, and that's pending a lot of assessments in different languages. Um, including Misteco. Uh, right now the counselors are going around and asking. Plus we have some French three students who want to give it a try, um, along with some Arabic and Tagalog um, students that are, are pending. Well, that's exciting, because I remember Speaking. last year like the, the top three were um, like Spanish, uh, ASL, and Arabic, right? Yeah. And so we're, it sounds like we're expanding. Yeah, and we already more. have we already have Germ one German or maybe two German um, student or German speaking students mm -hmm. that have passed APs in the past, um, and I think a French already passed. That's fantastic. Yeah. It's very exciting. Yeah. Trustee, thank you, doc Trustee Dr. Holm, Trustee Dodge Jr. Uh, I'd just like to say thank you for putting this together. You know, I know you're out in the community, and you know, I had the opportunity to run into you at Watsonville High School. Um, obviously, I support this resolution as well. But one of the questions that I had is, what are you doing to identify English, Spanish, you know, uh, speakers? You know, I know you're familiar with Mini White in E Hall and Radcliffe, where you know a lot of our students are speaking mixed Spanish and learning English to speak with their parents. So, what are you doing to identify and to recruit those students? Uh, you mean from like early on when they, uh, when they on, come yes. in? Like yeah. primary and secondary. Right, and so, so one, of, one of the things that we have in our registration packet is a home language survey. And in that, it's an opportunity for, to ask the families what languages students speak, what, what languages are around in the home. Um, and from that, we, we, d we ascertain whether or not they're English only or they have other languages. Um, if there's a, a question about like the predominant language, we have secondary interview questions. Um, and all of that leads to uh, either they're designated as English only or TBD, meaning to be determined. And that's when we take the initial LPAC. And that initial LPAC kind of informs their English proficiency. But all at the same time, um, the languages that are entered into that form are captured in our uh, student informational system. And, and so when, for example, this year, when they become seniors, we can pull um, all students with any languages other than English or Spanish and kind of see if those students, like that's why we have a, a wider web or wider net cast for students speaking languages other than those two um, as potential candidates. So there's almost like a, from when they enter, pathway all the way till 12th grade where we can still capture uh, um, opportunities for students to, um, to earn the seal. Thank you. 
Thank you, Trustee Dodge Jr. Trustee DeSerpa, did you have your hand up earlier? Sorry, just to something quick. Um, so we have dual immersion programs in this district, mm -hmm. right? How many do we have? We have five um, that go K-5 as of right now. Um, and what, actually one of those is the uh, is uh, Alianza that goes K-8. We are now in middle school at um, Rolling Hills. Um, and those are mostly the students that went from Freedom um, kindergarten through fifth grade and are now in sixth grade and next year it'll pass to seventh, it'll advance to seventh grade. And next year we are starting with Ohlone and Minty White. And Ohlone is one of the options along with Freedom and Alianza where students can come in either as the Spanish model or the English model um, or bilingual model. So there's so many people in the community from different districts even outside of this district who would yeah. love the opportunity to have their children in one of these programs. How do they learn more about that? Is there a wait list? How do people show interest in something like so this? So one, one of the things that we're doing at Kinder Registration now is we're actually capturing all of that. So we have one of our tables is our program option table where we have staff like Stephanie, the coordinator of EL services, um, who's explaining to every parent like, hey, whatever your primary languages are, we have a place for you if you want your child to be multilingual. Um, and we are capturing that data, and that data will inform decisions going forward as well about the proliferation of our programs. That's great. For my calculation, I think we have 70% of the kids in this district who are multilingual. So that, that's, a, that's a lot. Yeah. It's a majority. And, so and increasing. It's really yeah. cool. And sometimes probably challenging, too, for kids that are just starting out. Right. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, I just want to say that I'm it's, it's so exciting to see where our district is headed and that we're, you know, leading the charge for, for our area right now. And I shared at the DLAC meeting, you know, my grandfather helped in the 70s um, to get, you know, bilingual education at Radcliffe back then. Um, and so, yes, I'm, I'm just so thankful that we have the, these opportunities for our children to be to come out of school by uh, bilingual, multilingual. So thank you. Thank you, Trustee DeSerp and Trustee Flores. Trustee Vice President Soto. Well, it's just kind of funny how we're all dating ourselves because we're all <laughs> referencing the 70s. So just more of a story or a comment for me. You know, I went to Echo Valley School back in 78, 77, 78, 79. First grade, Mrs. Marcus class. And I still remember to this day. I got busted for speaking Spanish in class kind of piggyback Nellie's story. And uh, I had to write lines on the chalkboard in cursive, I will not speak Spanish in class. I will not speak Spanish in class. And all because, and I just remember her first name, Laura. I can't remember her last name at this time. It was such, so long ago. She snitched me out to the teacher. Said, Oscar's speaking Spanish. And there they go, they send me to the chalkboard. So. You know, to, to experience those kind of things as a kid, it, it, it kind of, to me, it lit a fire, you know? And maybe that's, that's why I'm so rebellious or, or part of the reason why I'm so rebellious. Um, because, you know, for someone to come and tell me that I can't speak Spanish, it, it, you know, it kind of sticks with you, especially as a kid. You know, my, my dad always used to say that, when people do, th do things to you as a kid, you remember them as an adult. And I still remember Mrs. Marcus to this day. But um, this program or this resolution, you know, kind of solidifies that and it kind of just does a 180 and brings us back to the fact that, you know, we are somebody. And so thank you for that. Thank you, Vice President Soto. And Michael, I just want to recognize you and the work that you're doing and making this happen. And, you know, this is a resolution, but the it's work that you're really doing behind the scenes in our district um, for our students and through the programs that you're you. doing. So thank you. Thank you. And, and thank you for going on Monday. Uh, it was a blast. <laughs> so I, I, I have a first and a second, right? Yes, I do. So I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? It carries 7-0. Thank you, Thank very you much. Michael. 
And moving on to our next item, 9.4, Autism Acceptance Month, resolution number 23-24-35. And this report will be presented by our SELPA Director of Special Services, Heather Gorman. Welcome. Welcome. Is this on? So could we start with the resolution, please, and show this a little bit later? <laughs> Good evening, um, interim. I'm going to take a breath and start again. Good evening, President Acosta, interim Superintendent Sheckman, and Board of Trustees. I had a few people with me tonight to um, support this resolution, and they did end up going home. But I am going to speak for them because they work directly with some of our students with autism, and they were excited and happy to support this resolution and talk to you about it tonight. So I had a behaviorist, Heather Pint, who's been a behaviorist in special services um, in PBUSD for the past 20 years. And she's worked with many, many, many families and students and um, students with autism spectrum disorder. And Christy Mandin, who is also a behaviorist in BCBA and special services and has worked with our district and with students for over 14 years. So autism is defined as a developmental disability significantly affecting verbal and nonverbal communication and social interactions, generally evident before the age of three, that adversely affects a child's educational performance. Autism spectrum disorder, ASD, affects one in 36 children. PBUSD currently serves 331 students with an educational diagnosis of autism from eligibility to the age of 22 years old. When I st first started presenting this resolution, I said that number at about 135. So you can see how much we've grown and how many students we have identified and now are supporting. That said, April 2nd is World Autism Awareness Day, and furthermore, the month of April is recognized as Autism Acceptance Month. The PBUSD community can take the pledge to create a world where all people with autism can reach their full potential by increasing understanding and acceptance. PBUSD currently has autism programs at Duncan Holbrook Preschool, Rio Del Mar Elementary, H.A. Hyde Elementary, Radcliffe, and Ansoldo. Students with ASD can achieve success in school when provided with well-implemented evidence-based practices. And this is when we can show um, that slide. We have created, and really our behaviorist, Heather Pint, Christy Mandon, who we're gonna be here tonight, have created things like this to be shared with all of our um, schools where if you click on any of those things, they'll bring up um, information about autism. They have videos that are in there. It's just a really neat resource for our schools and it's been shared with all of our el elementary schools. So I just wanted to show you some of the things that we're doing for this month. And we also work with CAPTAIN, the California Autism Professional Training and Informational Network, which is a cadre of agencies and family partners that collaborate for the effective implementation of evidence-based practices to provide to our students. Together with, we provide students with access to these evidence-based um, practices to support them in becoming the people they want to be. So therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education of Pajaro Valley Unified School District declare the month of April 2024 as Autism Acceptance Month and that all schools be encouraged to celebrate this occasion with appropriate meaningful instructional activities that promote acceptance, like what we've shared. Thank you, Heather. Mm -hmm. um, do we have any public speakers to this item? We do not. Okay, seeing none, I'll bring it to the board for discussion, deliberation, questions, comments, or a motion, or all of the above. I have a couple comments. Mm -hmm. Thanks for bringing this forward. I'd like to make a motion to approve. Um, I, I wanted, to, for when I first came to the district, the we did not have an autism program here. Mm. I don't think. Okay. And then we created one. What was the name of it? Or, well, we. I think we've. 
We've served students with autism for a very We've long time. We've served them for a long time, but we actually We've put in like built a, programs, yeah. yes, and we worked um, to build and work off the evidence-based programs. Um, so we have those programs that we have refined and um, made better to support our students. What's our number autism. of autistic students in that program? Well, in all of our ours, right, right now, right. we have 331 in the district. And like I said, and many are mainstreamed. Mm -hmm. right. Many are mainstreamed. And then are there some just specifically in the programs that we've created? Mostly, but even in, even in the programs that we've created that have um, students that have more needs, we have them out and mainstreamed into classes too. So like at Rio Del Mar, a lot of the students are out in our general education classrooms. They do have support in those classrooms, but they do also have a time when they can come back. They. They just did um, a whole day where they rented um, a movie theater for all of our students at one of the sites to go and have the experience with the parents of seeing the first movie that they've ever been able to see because they got to turn the lights up a little bit more, they turned the movie down. And so they're, they're creating these experiences for the students. That I is present. really cool. It was, it was really neat, yeah. Yeah, I'm wonderful. Okay, thank yeah. you. Thank you, Trustee DeServo, Trustee Dr. Holm. I'll, I'll second the motion. I do want to note the time no. at 10.23, so I'd like to make a point of order motion to extend. Can we finish this item and then do you think we have time? Or did you have comments that, on this item? I just wanted to make I'm going to make a point of order motion to okay. extend the meeting until 12.30. Okay. I'll second. Okay. I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. And I'd like to, going back to, to comments, just, you know, this is such an important, um, having that acceptance, you know, I've said it before, but I want to mm -hmm. say it again. Acceptance is so much stronger than awareness mm -hmm. um, because of, it's inclusive. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have, I have friends on the spectrum and just, you know, watching their journeys is, um, I just appreciate this motion. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or discussion from the board? I have a first and a second then. Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? None. See none, it carries 7-0. All right, moving on to our next item, 9.5 PBUSD Alternative Curriculum for Life Skills Program. And I get this report will be presented by the SELPA Director of Special Service, Heather Gorman. So good evening again. You're going to see me here a couple of times tonight. President Acosta, Board of Trustees, Interim Superintendent, Mr. Sheckman. So we're pleased to bring forward the, uh, sorry, started reading the wrong one. Um, so as we're looking at moving forward with our board policy, which is going to be up next for the alternative graduation for students with cognitive disabilities, we're also um, required to adopt a standards-based curriculum to support our diploma track. Luckily, we're... Okay, luckily um, we have already in PVUSD for the last three years have been working on this and have been using a standards-based curriculum with our life skills class. So we start with our life skills class and looking at the basics curriculum. This is what we first adopted five or six years ago. We've had this in our district for a while and really looking at functional academics and ELA math community history events, and so this is more hands-on um, with accommodations and modifications for the curriculum. And then um, three years back, we did create um, actual like courses for all of our um, course codes for all of the classes that we had for our life skills students. And so we have the whole, like the life skills humanities, and we're teaching to the standards in ELA, um, read to learn, life skills math, exploring math. So it's not a, a curriculum like our general education curriculum, but it is focused and aligned with standards. And so then we, um, like I said, a few years ago now, we have adopted attainment curriculum. And this is the curriculum that we'd like you to adopt as a board so that it can go with the board policy and be used to um, support our students on the diploma track. 
So this is an evidence-based curriculum. It's designed for students with moderate to severe disabilities. It's aligned to core standards, systematic instruction. And so we have this actually in um, our elementaries all the way up to high school. Um, there's prompt and correction procedures for supporting t um, students that may have the need to have more than one time to learn something, alternative response modes built into the curriculum, there's assessment and data collection built into the um, curriculum, and it's repetitive for students that may need to have more repetition to learn and understand, and then it also works on generalizing the knowledge. So teaching to the standards, this is just um, a quick sample of an ELA lesson where it's very project-based. And then on the right, you can see some of the things about giving your opinion. They talk about different ways that students can actually you know, show what they know. It's not just you know, one way for them to do anything. Um, and then I really liked this um, part of it, like with in chemistry, and this is a higher level example. It's looking at chemical reactions in your body. And so you can see as they're reading something, there may be pictures to help them know that, okay, that, that word means body, and this is what the symbol for chemical means. And so they're using that, and then they're also using projects and hands-on learning to learn about chemical reactions and heat and faster reactions. So they're going through this whole process, and um, it's it's a really nice um, curriculum. I've talked to some of the teachers about it since we've started using it. You know, always with our life skills um, students, they they do talk about you know the more hands-on, the more project-based, the better it is for our students. Um, and this is starting to get them to where they want to go with this. So really what we're looking at is the um, diploma pathway for the what I presented last time about the board policy and this is the alternative diploma pathway and students that are eligible take the CAA which is the California alternative assessment and then they can graduate with the diploma we will build this curriculum into what they are taking and they will get pass fail grades for taking this and then earning their way to get a diploma when they finish high school. And that's all. Thank you. Do we have any public speakers to this item? We do not. All right, seeing none, I will bring it back to the board for discussion, questions, deliberation. Trustee Dodge, Jr. Uh, I just like to say thank you for bringing this resolution up. Um, I know we have a great program at Yee Hall Middle School. I know there's a teacher there who's dedicated almost 10 years to this program. I've seen firsthand her dedication, compassion, and love for her students. And I would like to encourage you know my colleagues, if they have a chance after spring break, to check out her classroom and any other elected officials from the city of Watsonville who would like to attend and see what she's doing. I'd also like to, you know, to thank the behavior technicians who also you know, work with these students, these instructional aides who work with these students. And um, you know, I, I had something else on the top of my head, but I, I just wanted to, to say you know, thank you for putting this resolution together. And um, you know, I, you know, not to be too negative, but in a time of upcoming budget cuts, we have to remember that these students are our most vulnerable and we need to do everything we possibly can to protect these type of programs. So, thank you. And it almost sounds like you want to make a motion there. And I'd like to make a motion to support this agenda item. Thank, thank, you. thank you, Trustee Dodge, Jr. Trustee bolano Scow. I, I agree with them comments and I'll second the motion. Thank, thank you, Trustee bolano Scow. Anyone else? Quick question. Yes, mm -hmm. Trustee Um How long was this, is this a requirement this is a requirement. So within the board policy, when we're looking at a diploma track for our students in our life skills program, they are required to be using a standards aligned curriculum. That's great. So, yeah. Okay. And how long were you looking um, for a specific curriculum? 
So we spent a couple years and we uh, have already been using this curriculum and now I'm bringing it forward because in order to adopt it. adopt it and actually use it as the one to move forward with the um, board policy for That's diploma. Great. Yeah. It looks it looks good, very yeah. good to me. Yeah. So. It is and it, it does support. match with what we've been doing before and I think, you know, everything there's things that we can work on but i think it's a good alignment with what we're doing and moving forward thank you no further questions thank you trustee deserve anyone else all right seeing none i have a first and a second i'll call for a vote all those in favor aye, aye. any opposed seeing none it carries seven zero thank you heather mm -hmm. um Moving on to 9.6, Board Policy Update 6146.4, Graduation Pathway, and this report will again be presented by SELPA Director of Special Services, Heather Gorman. Welcome again. So, good evening. One last time, President Acosta, Board of Trustees, and Interim Superintendent, Mr. Schechtman. So, in a public hearing that was held on March 13th, I brought forward the Board Policy Updates to be in line with the new law and Ed Code in the state of California. There were no requests for any changes that for what was brought forward last week and I'm here today to ask that you adopt this new board policy thank you Heather any public speakers to this item there are not all right seeing then I'll bring it back to the board for discussion deliberation questions make a motion to approve thank you trustee de Serpa. I have a motion to approve I'll second I have a second are there any other comments or discussion seeing none I'll call for a vote all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Seeing none, it carries 7 0. Thank you, Heather. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item 9.7 adopt a declaration of need for fully qualified educators for the 2024 2025 school year. This report will be presented by our interim assistant superintendent of HR, Mr. Saxon. Welcome, Mr. Saxon. Good evening, President Acosta, Vice President Soto, Interim Superintendent Checkman. I'm uh, Interim Assistant Superintendent Brian Saxon of HR. So uh, the first thing I have tonight is our Declaration of Need for Fully Qualified Educators. This is an annual um, declaration that we have to bring to the board in order to allow us to hire uh, emergency-based credentialed staff, such as STIPs, short-term staff permits, PIPs, um, and the like. So um, we, every year when we hire and interview, we always look for candidates that have uh, credentials, either multiple subjects, single subjects that are clear or preliminary, have gone through their credential program. But there are occasions where we do not have those candidates or we have someone who is in a program and can't currently complete the program. And so that is where this declaration of need comes in. It gives us some flexibility in our hiring. Um, and then once we get these people in the door, we provide them with these one year emergency credentials and then we support them as they go through their programs, hopefully to earn their preliminary credential and move into a clear credential. So we respectfully ask that you would approve this so we can continue to fill all our school openings. Thank you, Mr. Saxon. Do we have any public speakers to this item? We do not. Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board for discussion, deliberation, or questions and comments. Oh, if none, I'll entertain a motion. I'll move to approve. A second. I have a first, I have a second. No further discussion. All right, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, it carries 7 0. Thank you. Um, moving on to item 9.8, the Pajaro Valley Federation of Teachers Sunshine pr proposal to Pajaro Valley Unified School District for collective bargaining agreement negotiations for the 2024-2025 school year. And this report will be presented by our interim assistant superintendent of HR, Mr. Saxon. Welcome again. Good evening once again. Uh, President Acosta, Vice President Soto, Interim Assistant Superintendent Sheckman. I'm Brian Saxton, and I'm bringing this back to you. We did have the public hearing on this. There's no new information. This is just the action part of uh, this Sunshine proposal. So we do respectfully request that you would approve this um, as discussed in our public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Saxton. Do we have any public speakers to this item? We do not. All right, seeing none, I'll bring it to the board for deliberation discussion I'll move to approve second 
I have a first and I have a second. Did you have a comment? No, I'll third it. I'll third it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other discussion? Questions? Okay. Then I'll call for the vote with the first and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Seeing none, it carries 7 0. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now moving on to item 9.9, .9, new class specification community school specialist report. This report will be presented by our director of classified human resources, Ms. Shanks. Welcome. Thank you. Um, good evening, President Acosta, board members, and Superintendent Sheckman. Um, this item before you tonight is a new class description titled Community Schools Specialist. A community school is both a place and a set of partnerships. Um, it's a collaborative approach to supporting student success. In a community school, staff and community partners work together to identify and address the various needs of students and families. Um, the team will be led by a school site community school specialist, this position, um, which is dedicated to connecting students and families to resources. The position will work in partnership with school departments and community partners to ensure there is a clear pathway to supports and effective communication about the available supports. Um, PVUSD was awarded a California Community Schools Partnership Program planning grant for two years, or two years ago, and um, this February the district applied for another $34 million community schools implementation grant um, for 25 PVUSD schools. Um, in order for the efforts to be successful, schools need a dedicated team member uh, who can focus on the services provided to ensure the partnerships are effective, maintained, and incorporated into the school community. The new classification was approved by the Personnel Commission on March 21st and placed on range 48 of the classified salary schedule. It will be a CSEA bargaining unit position. Um, so this evening I ask the board to approve the new class description and the revised classified salary schedule as presented. Thank you, Director Sh Ms. Shanks. Do we have any public comment on this? Well, we do not. Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board for discussion and deliberation. Seeing none, and I'll entertain a motion. Or Trustee Disturb, I'm so sorry. Where can we apply? <laughs> as, yeah, join <laughs> as soon as we right. open the this position. This is a cool position. Mm -hmm. This is a really cool position. So if there are creative people out in the community that um, want a great job building a program that will benefit many, many kids, this yes. is a very cool position. Thank you. Uh, make a motion to approve. Okay, I have a first and second. Uh, yes, Trustee Flores. Just a couple questions. So you had mentioned 25 schools that applied for this. Would each one of those look, schools would have this position? Um, yes, I, I don't know if some of the smaller schools would have an in, a full-time individual. There, there might be for the smaller schools um, somebody who shares those sites, but for the most part, yes, every school would have a dedicated community school specialist at their site. Okay, and if the school is granted this community school grant, is that money going to cover this position or is this going to have to be covered? No, I mean with the 34 million, yes, it okay. would be covered would by the grant. That. Okay. Yes. Great. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Flores. All right. No further questions? Okay. I have a first and a second. I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Carries 7 0. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Now moving on to item 910 adopt level one developer fees 2024 justification st study. Um, this report will be presented by our Director of Fiscal Services, Ms. Janine M. Thank you. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening, Board of Trustees, President Acosta, Interim Superintendent, Mr. Shuckman. My name is Jenny M., Director of Fiscal Services, here to present the first of two action items related to developer fees. Uh, for this action item, it is for your consideration to adopt the Level 1 Developer Fee um, 2024 Justification Study. The purpose of this study is to document if there's a reasonable relationship between um, residential, commercial, and industrial development and the need for new or modernized facilities um, at our district. So the, uh, the study was completed by SchoolWorks and it was determined that there is a reasonable need to collect level one developer fees, um, to continue the collection of fees and also to see a slight increase over last year. So previously we were collecting $4.79 for residential, 
and 78 cents for commercial industrial. So the new developer fees would be uh, $5.17 for residential and 84 cents for commercial and industrial. So this action item would be to um, adopt the study. Um, and I will open it up to any questions. Thank you, Jenny. Um, do we have any public speakers to this item? No, we do not. I see none. I will bring it back to the board for discussion, deliberation. Doc Trustee Dr. Hom. Just, just uh, clarifying, because I was going through previous times that this kind of thing has come to the board. And so just for my own you know, clarification, so this motion is just we're approving the study and the next motion is what actually says yes do the fee yes okay just making sure I understood that correctly thank you thank you for that I'll move to approve thank you for that clarification trustee dr. home that was a question that came up in agenda setting committee and we didn't have you there I couldn't answer it. Um, trustee vice president Soto I remember so when I built my house I paid developer fees here at the district and this was almost 20 years ago and back then it was like 350 a square foot so I mean obviously inflation and everything else is paying a uh, is contributing to these prices so, so as far as these go with any new developments that are going on like the ones out on Walker Ohlone Parkway are we collecting revenue from those projects I believe so. I'm not 100% certain so I can certainly look that up and let you know because yeah, there, I mean, there's there's mm -hmm. a considerable amount of square mm -hmm. footage being developed out there that, you know, hopefully we're collecting revenues on those. I mean, hopefully the city's submitting those uh, requests to us from their planning mm -hmm. and building department. And I I do believe um, within the district jurisdiction, um, any development we do collect the fees. And in the study, um, I believe it was towards the back. There's a really handy map that shows um, the the territories that we're collecting the fees for. All right, cool. I mean that that's all positive money for us to help improve the district as a whole. Yes. So thank you. Thank you, Vice President Soto, Trustee Judge Jr. Was this, were these graphs um, compared to other districts surrounding us, you know, for example, Santa Cruz or Salinas or Gilroy, like the numbers, or? Um, so what the study does is it looks at um, how many uh, families could come in due to the new development. Um, and what they do is they look at what the possible impacts would be to our need for facilities to either modernize or create new facilities. Um, so they look at, um, they kind of estimate out the cost. So um, I believe that there is a small difference between the different districts. Um, it's going to be related to enrollment changes. So for us, we're in declining enrollment. So um, even though in re we're in declining enrollment because of the level of development happening, um, it's been determined that we do still need some uh, funds to mitigate some of uh, the impacts. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee George Jr. Any other? Anyone else? Trustee DeSerpa? I have a first I have a, a motion. Second? There's no second. I'll second. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you have other comments? <laughs> no, it's just getting more and more expensive for people to, to add on and to build. And, um, and it seems like year after year, over year, every year, we're increasing the fees here. And I, I just feel a bit sorry for our public who has to pay these fees. That's very expensive, $5.17. So anyway, I don't know. I'm just standing up for people who are remodeling or adding on or building. It's a lot of extra money. Thank you, Trustee DeSerpa, for those additional comments. Any other deliberation? All right, so I have now I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No, seeing none, it carries 7 0. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and moving on now to the next item, which is 9 11. Consider the approval of the level one developer fees resolution number 23 24 27. And this report will be presented by Director of Physical Services, Ms. Ng. 
Thank you. Uh, so this is for um, the approval of the increase in the developer fees for level one. Um, in the last few years, um, the revenue that we received from developer fees have um, been used to um, uh, for new classrooms at Duncan Holbert, the Emerald Logasi Culinary Garden and Cooking Kitchen, um, Watsonville High School field repairs, softball dugout repairs, um, softball field upgrades, um, restroom construction, leasing portables, as well as um, the district office uh, front uh, front entrance reception area. Um, so for currently for this year in 23-24, we've been using the developer fees um, to support leasing modular classrooms at 14 of our sites. Um, so this resolution is to for your consideration to approve the developer fees. Thank you. Do we have any public comment on this item? We do not. Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board for deliberation and discussion. I'll move to approve. I have a first. I have a second. Any other comments or deliberation? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I'm going to abstain. You're going to abstain? I am, yeah. Thank you. Okay. So it will carry a six. Zero one. Correct, Deborah? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, moving on to our next item. This report, um, this, I'm sorry, this item number 9.12, the approval of the proposed mural at Aptos Junior High. This report will be presented by our Assistant Superintendent of Secondary Education, Ms. Aguirre. Welcome. Good evening, President Costa, Board of Trustees, and Interim Superintendent, Mr. Shuckman. Uh, this evening, I have the honor of presenting a proposed mural at Aptos Junior High School. The mural was uh, designed and is being constructed by uh, students Paola Jimenez, Nayela Reynoso, Siena Salinas Guzman, along with their teacher, Ms. Uh, Carrie Gill. Um, they've taken the time during the after school program and they are designing it and they are putting it together. It is uh, like a pebble inlay on top of a net that will be actually put directly onto the back side of a building. The reason why that they, um, they use the pebble inlay is that it reflects the other murals that are currently at Aptos Junior High. Um, so this is what um, it would look like on the wall. Um, I have a couple of other pictures of up close of what some of, so this is the one of the works in progress that's currently being um, completed. Um, and then this is Paola's. So right now, uh, Miss Gill's and then CNS. And so with that, I ask for the approval um, to have this mural placed at Aptos Junior High School. Thank you, Ms. Gary. Do I have any, do we have any public speakers on this item? We do not. All right, seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board for deliberation and discussion. Any those are, questions those are Those are just beautiful. They're very beautiful. Those, those are. And up close with the rocks, I um, have had the, the chance to actually see this and it's just, it, they're, it's beautiful and it's nice too. It'd be cool yeah. to have some murals like that here at the DO. You know? just, all right, I'll make a motion to approve, sure. Thank you, Trustee Bolano Scow. Anyone else? Trustee Dr. Holm. I'll, I'll second, and I just, you know, the, the murals, the mosaic murals that are already at Aptos Junior High are gorgeous, and I can't wait to see these in place. Yes, and I did forget to mention in the board backup, it actually has the artist's um, rendering of the, the work that they are, that they created, and the reason why. So. Thank you. I have a first. And a second. Any other deliberation? All right. Trustee Serpa? No. Just thanks. Thank you to Carrie Gill and the kids. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Trustee Serpa. So I have a first and second. I'll call for the vote now. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Seeing none, it carries 7 0. Thank you, Ms. Gary, for being Thank here you. this evening. Now we will move to. Our um, report and discussion item 10.2, board, tr uh, board training on, pro I'm sorry, I'll get it out. 
Board Training on Program Governance and School Readiness Plan, Migrants and Seasonal Head Start 2024. And this report will be presented by our Director of Migrant and Seasonal Head Start, Ms. Renteria. Welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, Board of Trustees, President uh, Acosta, <clears throat> and Superintendent Checkman. I hope you, I hope you can hear me. My, my voice is a little lost tonight. I'm okay. My name is Angelica Renteria, Director of Migrant and Seasonal Head Start, and with me, Jose Rocha, I'm the Program Operations Supervisor for the Migrant Seasonal Head Start. For this presentation, I'm going to take only three minutes to do the board training, and then Jose is going to do the rest, uh, speaking to you about uh, school readiness and program goals. <clears throat> As part of the Head Start requirements, I'm responsible to provide training to the board <coughs> on the governance leadership and oversight capacity screener within 60 days of the start of the five-year grant period. <clears throat> For your reference, we just entered the five-year grant period on March 1, so we're right on time to do this portion of the, of the uh, required activity. <clears throat> I really like the screener. This is a great tool to support agencies um, in building capacity and fulfilling requirements. It also identifies needs and help us a request for support. <clears throat> this this uh, screener has four, uh, is, is, is a 15 page document with 17 sections and it has four columns. The nice part about this screener is that we can uh, read the regulation and then we have space for to confirm that we have a practice or a procedure in place to meet the regulation, and then t um, a timeline uh, for full implementation, and the last column provides a space for us to request support. So that out of the 17 sections, 10 sections are applicable to the board, and uh, number one speaks of the composi composition of the governing board that is not applicable to school districts or you are elected positions. Number three uh, requires uh, the, the board to have a policy on conflict of interest. Number five uh, speaks about uh, the creation and the need to have advisory groups for the program. Number six, uh, the training that I'm doing right now. Number eight, making sure that we have established our requirements for eligibility to make sure that only el eligible and qualified families come into the program for services. Number nine, a system for approvals of budgets, expenditures, and financial audit. And uh, all of these items come to you in the consent agenda throughout the year, including number 10. Availability of annual reports that include funding, number of families and children serve is number 12. And number 13, 13 making sure that we provide um, ongoing reports to the board. And those go through Eva Renteria monthly or every two months. <clears throat> and then uh, to have a system to make sure that all reports and approvals are submitted to the board after policy committee approvals. Section 17 speaks of the requir re reporting requirements. Every agency that get, receives federal funding or Head Start funding is responsible to report as appropriate to the grantee immediately or, or as soon as possible any significant incident affecting the health and safety of children, circumstances affecting the financial viability of the program, breaches of identifiable information, program involvement in legal proceedings, and any other matter that is reported to the state or to the local authorities, including the Department of Social Services. So I'm gonna be completing the screener soon. I have 60 days to complete it and submit it to the grantee. And um, I'll be happy to meet with you and go over the document, the complete document, so we can together review all the components Please let Mr. Checkman know if you're interested in doing this, um, as the report needs to be signed by President Acosta before it's submitted. Jose? All right. Thank you, Angelica. So I'm gonna present uh, how the Migrant Seasonal Head Start supports um, 
school readiness for our um, just moving let's see if I can put it over here there you go so I'm going to present on uh, how the migrant season head trust supports uh, school readiness for kinder eligible children so uh, prior to uh, um, goal setting we have head Start expectations that we must um, uh, consider so under the Head Start performance standards, uh, we are required to set goals specifically to support uh, school readiness. These goals must align to the Early Learning Outcomes Framework, which is known as the ELOF. Below you will get to see uh, the framework, which describes what children should be able to know and do based on their age in the five uh, central learning domains, which is uh, purchase to learning, social emotional development, language and literacy, cognition, perceptual motor, and physical development. Uh, they also must align to uh, the state uh, early learning standards, which in your right, you can see that we use the California Preschool Learning Foundations. And also they uh, must align uh, with um, school expectations where our um, Head Start children will attend once they enter kindergarten. And below, um, you can see that we use the PVUSD key, perform key performance indicators, KPIs, and LCAP goals. So uh, once uh, uh, goals are identified, the Migrant Seasonal Head Start utilizes the creative curriculum, which is, is a comprehensive research evidence-based curriculum that supports learning in the five central learning domains. Below, you'll get to see that we also use a teaching pyramid framework, which um, it is an enhancement that uh, we support the social emotional competence in our children. We also utilize the Desire Results Developmental Profile, which is a DRDP. This is how we assess learning in the five central learning domains and also provide ongoing um, individualized support to our children. Below, you'll get to see that we use the Learning Genie um, software where our teachers and family child care home providers use to complete the DRDP. And finally, we use the Kindergarten Student Entrance Profile, the KSIP to really assess uh, school-ready knowledge um, expectations and also to evaluate and determine if our school readiness goals for our program are being met. More information on the KSIP is that it is a observational-based tool that assesses children on 13 items, six on social emotional development, seven on school-ready uh, knowledge, so once our child assessments are completed, uh, we are required to analyze data results, also um, identify key factors that impact data, and then develop a, a support a plan to address these goals. So for the 23 school year, we identified three goals. The first one was on social emotional development. Uh, our goal was that 70% of four-year-olds will create and sustain meaningful uh, relationships with others and the ability to express, recognize, and manage own emotions, as well as respond appropriately to the emotions of others. Below you'll get to see the data. 45% uh, met the goal for the first collection. 70% uh, uh, met the goal for the final collection. I can say that the goal was met for the program. Uh, looking at the data, I can share that one of the key factors that impacted our data was implementing the uh, teaching pyramid uh, framework which our Disabilities Mental Health Coordinator provided a lot of uh, individualized and training throughout the season, where uh, teachers and family child care home providers uh, utilized the Teaching Pyramid Toolkit, where they had many of the visual and concrete uh, support resources, uh, specifically to support the nurturing relationships and the uh, high quality learning environments. Goal two was on uh, language and literacy. Uh, our goal was that 70% of four-year-olds will be able to listen and understand, use language, and engage in back-and-forth conversations with others. 41% um, um, met the goal for the first collection. 65 met the goal for the final collection. We continue to work on this goal. Uh, you can see that a 24% uh, growth increase uh, was made from the first collection. And I can also share with you that 50% of our children speak uh, indigenous language, so that really impacted the data. As well, speech and language continues to be the highest primary disability for our program, and our um, family child care home providers and teachers do not speak indigenous language, so that also makes it really difficult to assess and support this, this area. 
Uh, goal three was on cognition. Uh, goal was that 75% of four-year-olds will understand that numbers represents quantity and will be able to demonstrate number object correspondence when counting objects. So 49% uh, met the goal for the first collection and 70% met uh, the goal for the final collection. This is another goal that we're still working on, um, yet um, we have a 21% growth increase from the first collection. Here's a three-year uh, trend uh, data on the KSIP. You'll see that uh, year 21-22, 85% of our children were ready or almost ready for kindergarten, and on year 23-24, 94% of our children were ready or almost ready for um, kindergarten. So uh, based on our data outcomes, uh, we were able to establish the 24-25 school readiness goals for our program. Uh, and we decided to keep the same three goals on social emotional development, language and literacy, and cognition. Our goal is that 75% of uh, kinder eligible children will be at the ready or almost ready on the um, KSIP. Uh, these goals do align with the ELAF, uh, Learning Foundations, KPIs, and LCAP goals. This is our training and technical assistant plan for the year. These are the professional development topics that we will be providing to our teachers and family child care home uh, providers. Coaching, coaching will also be provided to our teachers and our family child care home providers on the following. Creative curriculum, learning genie, DRDP assessment, and individualized support uh, based on needs. This concludes our presentation. Do you have any questions for us? Thank you both. Do we have any public speakers on this item? Uh, we do not. All right. I'll remind the board this is just a report and discussion item, but um, I'll bring it back to the board for deliberation questions, comments. Trustee DeSerpa. <laughs> Great. I'm sorry you guys have to make this presentation this late at night. It's, it's a shame because it's a lot of very important information. We used to do this in a I think a six or eight hour training. I remember we used to do this on like a weekend. So you guys condensed a lot of information. So thank you for being here tonight. It was a very, very good presentation. Thank you. Very clear. Yeah, thank you for the information. Okay, thank you, Trustee DeSerpa and Vice President Soto. Anyone else? Trustee Dr. Hall? I just want to echo what my colleagues say and I just want to acknowledge the work that you're doing and especially the work that you did in this presentation and just know that it's appreciated. Thank you. Wonderful. Anyone else? No? Well, I'm going to end on a note to thank you and acknowledge you, Angelica, and all of your work. Um, I've known you for years and the fabulous work you're doing. And this name was already mentioned earlier this evening. Um, one of your steadfast supporters was our very own beloved and dear Rhea DeHart and who very early on mentored me about the importance of what you're doing in the program and I it's just been amazing for me to be able to watch it for all these years and what you're doing and and thank you for coming here and being here so late and I am sorry for that as well um, but what a wonderful presentation and all the work you're doing please keep it up but I know you will <laughs> thank you Thank you. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Yes. All right. Now we'll move on to item 11, consent agenda. Uh, consent items are routine items that come before the board. Uh, do we have any public speakers to consent? We do not. Are there any items that the board wishes to defer? Yes, Trustee Dodge. 11.5. Uh, 11.5. Anything else, just that? Yes. Anyone else? Anything else? Okay, so Trustee Judge, can you make a motion for me to that effect? To uh, I'd like the motion, like to make the motion we support the consent agenda minus agenda item 11.5. Deferring item 11.5. All right, I have a first, a second. I'll second. I have a first and a second. My kids are in the film industry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And I'm saying, okay, it carries 7-0 with deferring. Item 11.5, the agreement between Pajaro Valley Unified School District and the Latino Film Institute Youth Cinema Project. So I just had a question if we could scroll further down, like the total amount. 
so over the next three years, we're looking at almost $2 million? Is that what we're looking at? We're looking at just one year. We can't afford their three-year plan. Okay. But uh, was there an option to go for one year at a time? Yes. We could only afford it. Yeah. Okay. I, I just wanted to, you know, because I know it's a great program, but that's, again, you know, I'm just trying to look forward down the road, you know, because we keep talking about declining enrollment, cut, you know, we see what's happening all over the state. And so I just want the public to be aware and us to keep an eye, start looking. If cabinet wants to jump in, but I will add, we delayed bringing this to you probably for about two months. Okay. We delayed bringing this to you for two months. I thought it was very expensive. I knew very little about the program being my first year. My colleagues did some good work on it, and they were very aware of it, and thought one more year would be worth it. But feel free to add anything. They did the homework. Yeah, with the students, the work that they're doing, there's a, there's a group at PV High that are freshmen that can continue taking it as their sophomore year. And the work that's produced, we are doing it for one more year that was in the budget and has been in the budget. <laughs> um, it was after the end of next year that we did not identify the funding source for this project. Um, additionally, um, Assistant Superintendent Mon Haras and I are meeting with the um, agency tomorrow to go over in detail what next year's contract will provide to make sure that we do um, receive all of the services and um, equipment that is um, spoken about in the contract because it is a larger sum. I, I, thank you for explaining. I, I just saw the check mark, but I just wasn't sure. I just saw like, whoa, almost $2 million. Yep, and so, if we win all three years. Okay. I just, all right. Thank you guys for the explanation. So, well, that, I'd just like to make a motion to su support this item. I'll Perfect. second. Yes. I have a first second. Trustee Serpa, do you have a comment? Do we have funding sources like grant money that we could go after to continue to pay for this program? It's such an important program for our kids. It helps with their achievement. It, you know, sparks their interest in literacy and filmmaking. It's amazing. There are one of the best things we have in the whole district. Yeah, funding sources that are out there, not any of them that are currently within our budget um, that we could identify. And um, so we'll be taking a look at that. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Seeing none, I have a first and a second, so I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Seeing none, it carries 7-0. We will move on to, we do not need to reconvene into closed session, but um, item 14.1, action on report closed session. Are there any items to report out of closed session? Yes, we do, President Acosta. So for tonight's meeting, March 27, 2024, PVUSD board meeting readout. So closed session item number 2.3, expulsion referral. Under closed session agenda item 2.1, the, the board voted 601 to approve the recommendation from dis, district administration for a full expulsion for the remainder of this semester and next semester for student number 2324016 and student number 2324 Zero two zero. The board also approved the recommendation from district administration for a suspended expulsion for the remainder of this semester for student number two three two four zero two one and student number two three two four zero two three. So motion number one, closed session item number two point four. So I move to approve the certificated personnel report as presented by district administration on March twenty seven, twenty twenty four with 17 and 13 additional action items. May I have a second? I have a I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries 7-0. Motion number two, closed session item number 2.4. So I move to approve the classified personnel report as presented by district administration on 27 March, 2024 with six and 18 additional action items. May I have a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries 7-0. Closed session item number 
recommendation for sabbatical leave request for a certificated employee. Under closed session item number 2.6, the board voted 6-0-1 to approve the recommendation for a sabbatical leave request for a certificated employee. It was 5-1-1. It was 5-1-1, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's going to restate that. It was written in wrong. 5-1-1. That vote carried 5-1-1. So I shall read that again with a correction of the vote. So under closed session item number 2.6, the board voted 5-1-1 to approve the recommendation for sabbatical leave for request for a certificate employee. Uh, so last item, closed session item number 2.10, conference with legal counsel regarding exiting or existing litigation. Under closed session agenda item 2.10, the board voted 5-1-1 to approve the recommendation to continue to arbitration for existing litigation. And that is the last item on the list. Thank you, Vice President Soto. Um, moving on to item 15.1, our upcoming board meetings. Our next meeting is a special board meeting on April 17th for the, our Student of the Year Awards, which will be held virtually. And then the next regular board meeting will be on Wednesday, April 24th, 2024. And I now adjourn this meeting at 11.12 p.m.